And with that, we're into game two. Once again, folks, this is the stall ladder group stages. I know some folks were confused about the format, so let me just say that really quickly. Cloud9 versus Complexity. The group stages, each group has four teams, and whoever is the top two advance to the playoffs. So, uh, the, the playoffs of who goes to stall ladder. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I'm going to be joined by Noble Wings. Uh, what do you think Cloud9 needs to do differently this time? Do you think it was the draft, or do you think it was execution? Um, it was a little bit of both. I feel you don't draft a lot of physical damage versus Wyvern. Uh, that was a big mistake and it really showed during that game. But they didn't execute their uh, their safe lane that well versus Earthshaker. They didn't execute mid very well. Um, I don't want to like trash talk, but Brax died solo to Chessy and he needs to make sure that they play safe in a matchup like that. Because the way that their lanes were put out, as long as he just doesn't dive in and does okay, doesn't let Chessie snowball, um, the game goes a lot easier for them. Mm -hmm. um, and they they missed a lot of smoke ganks. I don't know what they could have done better, whether it was not smoking at the correct times or stuff like that, but the game just snowballed out of control for uh, complexity and they were able to take it easily. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to quickly say something because I know folks were wanting me to finish the story before the kind of game ending team fight. All I was saying is that apparently Vlad doesn't speak English and of course Zizi is from Mexico and so Swindles is making a joke that they, they don't have a great way of communicating with each other. So instead what they do is they just ping furiously on the map instead of actually talking to each other about what to do. Which is especially funny to see because you can kind of see their pings in game but I just assumed they were pointing things out. But when they were playing the IO tiny combo there would be these kind of strange pings and apparently that's just how they're like... Vlad will be like, yeah, yeah, I'm pinging here, we're doing it, and Z uh, Zizzy will be like, nah, I don't want to, but Vlad's like, no, we're going in, you don't have a choice, because I'm the IO. So, I just thought that was really funny to hear um, teams trying to work with players despite language barriers. But we have a draft on our hands! Ancient Apparition, I love this hero. Oh, I love the snow cone. How do you feel about Wyvern AA on the same team? Well, I, I think it's really strong. Um... AA actually works really well with uh, Wyvern because you can uh, give him a chilling touch and then he has like a 1000 range uh, right click that does like a hundred something damage every time. So it's it's actually really strong for your tri lane. Yeah. Now something else I love about this is with Winter's Curse, it reduces the damage taken by people attacking the cursed unit by 70%, but with AA Blast, albeit this isn't going to take effect until it's leveled higher, you of course still get the Frostbite proc. So it's not one of those spells, you know, it's not like when you hit a Sonic Wave and everybody's actually Winter's Cursed and it reduces the damage so much, you're still getting that fantastic debuff. So I really like that. Yeah, and uh, I think Cloud9, they respect the Winter Wyvern, they first picked it. <laughs> They saw how much it did last game and they picked it right up, but they didn't want to give it to uh, Vlad again. Yeah. He's got other heroes he can play, I'm going to assume. Well, <laughs> Vlad was definitely the MVP of last game. I think he did so much work with Cold Embrace. He had good ultimates. He had uh, good zoning with Arctic Burn. Like, he played amazingly last game yeah. and oh. on Russian Ping. <laughs> He, I, I don't know, I was just really impressed, as you said, the cold embraces that saved them the game in a number of places. Like, Zizzy should have died in a couple of places, and he was just a-okay. So, happens to the best of us, though. And, yeah, we're going to be seeing Templar Assassin Band out, and then also Windrunner um, again. I feel like that's kind of interesting. Was banned out by Cloud9. Yeah, how come? Uh, they just didn't really, I, I don't know, it's, they wanted to ban out a lot of mids, they must have something in mind, maybe Ember Spirit, they wanted to ban out, yep. <laughs> okay, as you said, yeah. Of course he doesn't stack up well against physical damage, and also the mid match, well actually, the mid matchup against Windrunner. They didn't even ban the Windranger, but I think, I don't, I don't know what Cloud9, I think Cloud9 kind of wanted the Ember, so yeah. that might be a block pick by Complexity. Ritsu is really good on it. Um, I will pull up the stats in a second, but I do believe they had a 70% win rate. Oh yeah, series is not what I wanted. On Cloud9, on the Ember Spirit, this patch. So yeah, they have a 71% win rate on that hero. So yeah, it's it's a comfort hero for Cloud9, to say the least. <laughs> and uh, also Complexity banned out the TA. That's pretty normal versus uh, any Dire strat. Like uh, TA on Dire lets you take Rush on really early. Um, we'll see what Cloud9 pick up. They need a mid laner, and one thing to note is that pretty much every popular mid has been banned out. They've banned Shadowfiend, Quap, Windrunner, and TA, and Ember has been picked up, so there's not many mids left. Yeah. 
Now, oh, I love this announcer. She speaks all the time now. Sorry, it used to be, I swear, she would only speak, like, randomly, and now I get to hear her all the time. I like that. Either way, Earthshaker, offlane Earthshaker for Cloud9. Let's see if they can do as well on it. I'm sure MSS very familiar with this hero. I would... Not to put down Swindles, but he himself admitted he's new to the offlane. And so I think MSS being the more experienced offlaner here, I'm expecting big things from him on this Earthshaker. Yeah, absolutely. I think Earthshaker is one of MSS's recently signature heroes. I think he really likes playing that hero in the offlane. Yeah, so... Skywrath. Yeah, this is the Wyvern counter, I think. You know, I'm not a huge fan of it because I feel like it doesn't do enough. Although... With the way complexity is laning, I'm assuming that this Tuscan dying, that's the, like, hell lane to put against your opponent's safe lane carry. And then they're trying to make sure they have a strong Zona on the off lane. Oh, I, I actually... Okay, Skybath, of course, is good versus Wyvern, but yep. right now I think they want to put the Ember mid, and I would kind of put the Skybath kind of wandering around mid, maybe rotate up to the tri lane and make sure that Ember gets a good lane, and then you pick, uh, you pick whoever's playing carry a really good 1v1 matchup that he can win easily. Oh, and folks have pointed out, I'm, I'm really smart, they're banning like Chessie's heroes, that's what both the Windrunner and the Quop were most likely, just not wanting to deal with Chessie's lineup. I am not as experienced on the Chessie knowledge, I feel like that could have been phrased much better. <laughs> yeah, I don't, just, Chessie hasn't played recently, so it's... Uh... Yeah, and just so folks know, he is still in the stage, Complexity is trying to use him as much as he can, but he is still in the stage where he cannot sit or he cannot play in many games in one day just because of his back problems. So he's trying to play as many as he can with them, but I don't believe... Um, I've seen them do this where they won't use him in some games and they'll use him in others in the same day just because I don't believe he can play so many in a row right now. This is this is new. I haven't seen Beastmaster in a while. I love it! Ember can't deal with physical damage, and what is Beastmaster made of? Primal Roars. Also, it's yeah. a nice little buff. I feel like the Inner Beast is something which is maybe underappreciated in the in Dota as a whole, but of course the competitive players all know how good Inner Beast can be. Whatever carry Cloud9 has, it's like having a free AC. Well, I meant this is a Brax uh, Beastmaster. This is going to be mid Beastmaster oh, versus... Yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with... Is that... Is his Beastmaster bad? And like, why are we... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, well, I actually said that in a good way. I think Brax okay. is a good Beastmaster player, but it's going to be interesting because I haven't seen Beastmaster mid since, I think, like, 6.84 came out. He's been getting some more action recently. I've seen Monkey Business run it a few times, having No-Tail play it in the small amount of Dota I do get to catch when I'm not costing myself, and a Huskell ban out. Being on top of that, um, I you probably didn't see, I was causing some games earlier where a team got a surprise Huskell and it just wrecked the game, so I really like getting rid of that. Yeah, I was gonna say Huskar would be really good for Cloud9 because Winter Wyvern negates all the physical damage and it be he becomes basically unkillable with Winter Wyvern and is uh, passive. Yeah, so. Either way, um, also maybe they need to watch out for an Alchemist, but I really doubt we're gonna see that come out here. I think that Cloud9 doesn't probably want such a Complexities. Not high damage output here. I don't know. And it would be their safe lane. Yeah. They they think Ember is going to the safe lane, though. And they're trying to ban out all their Chessie's heroes then. They banned out the Lina. So, uh, I don't know what hero they can pick for Chessie right now that's going to do well versus Beastmaster. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. So. And... This I don't know what is going to come out next. Sorry, I was just checking oh. some static. Apparently, we're not coming through in Dota TV, and so I was a bit distracted uh, by that. That's, that's, uh, I don't know. I can try to fix that. But no, I, I don't say, uh, think it's us. I'm pretty sure it's there's a bug sometimes where you just don't get through anyway. Anyway, you were saying. I'd really like to see like a Viper or a Razor pick to go on middle. I feel like that would destroy Beastmaster. you pretty much win the lane instantly. Um, and it... They both can build mech, they both can go drums, and they can kind of five men with them dying really easily. So yeah. I really like to see one of the two. I And I agree, I feel like both have some natural abilities to save them from what we're already seeing come out of Cloud9. Razor, of course, with that unstable current, and then Viper with that corrosive skin. I maybe even like Viper a bit more here, just because of the amount of AA blasting and stuff. And business, like, when your Viper starts getting tanky, you AA blast him, and then you immediately regret it, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see either. Uh, Razor will also do really well for tower pushing with his Aghanims. So, and he does okay versus Winter Wyvern. Like, uh, his ultimate, even if you uh, cold embrace someone, his ultimate will still tick on them and do minus armor especially. Yeah, so it's really nice there. But 
Let's see what complexity wants instead. I'm just trying to... I don't see any super great synergy. I mean, they're kind of betting it all right now, from the looks of it to us, betting it all on this Ember Spirit, which is... He does take quite a while to get online, and it's an Invoker. I wasn't expecting this. That's... That's a chessy invoker. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, oh goodness me, wishing I had watched more Alliance during the chessy period so I could be an expert on this, but uh, you're gonna have to help me out here. I am not a big invoker player. I have two friends who, if invoker is viable, they pick it, and I do not get to touch it, so <laughs> you're gonna be my invoker expert. Um, I do know with the Aghanim's buff and other various buffs, you can actually get off, I think, five spells if you have Ag's max level Cyclone. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, um... I almost suggested Invoker, but I thought it was a little too greedy for them, but they went for it. And uh, a couple things to note, if he goes Exhort, uh, Invoker is really good versus Winter Wyvern, because if they Cold Embrace someone, you can just drop EMP, you can drop Sunstrike, you can drop all these spells on top of him. So Winter Wyvern now has to be really careful using his spells, and even if he goes Wex, you can still drop EMP and get free mana off of it. Um, he's going to do really well versus Beastmaster mid, and... Um, a Spectre pick from Cloud9, so they're going for late game. Yeah, this is another hero I've seen Ritsu do really well on, but at the same time, I don't know if it's going to do so well against something like an Invoker, which is very comfortable coming into your lane, doing a bit of ghost walk in action, getting a, getting a gank on you. So, And also, AA doesn't have... This is, I love AA. He's one of my favorite heroes, I find. If you want easy MMR, you play AA. But I think that... It's problematic here because he doesn't have the strongest of laning presences. Like, yes, Chilling Touch means that you can be very aggressive, but your Cold Feet doesn't proc unless you have some help. Maybe Arctic Bone can do that. And you're not a fantastic zoner or anything because of the long cooldown on... Oh, goodness. For the long cooldown on Chilling Touch. Yeah. And, oh, you see uh, MSS TP'd bottom right away, just like last game. Yeah. Uh, Swindle did the same play. Yeah. Uh, cheaper TP is making this super, super viable. And my mic, at least, I know, is on in Dota TV. I don't know about yours, but I'm assuming it is and that we're just having yeah. reborn issues. We can blame the patch, actually, since one just dropped. How excellent for us. <laughs> yeah, my friend told me, like, messaged me saying it was on, so we should okay. be good. Yeah, then then we're good. We're perfect. Um, My mouse is glowing strange colors. I didn't know it did that. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's get into it. Just looking at these two lineups, I think we can we can say that it looks like C9. They have the super late game. Your Razor's gonna get, uh, your Spectre's gonna get buffed up. But at the same time, I don't know if you're making it there, and Ember and Invoker are no slouches in a late game, either. Yeah, Ember is one of the best late game heroes. He's underrated, but he split pushes really well. You can't really catch him out. Um, if he gets Lincolns, like, you can maybe Fissure into Roar, but besides that, it's going to be really difficult to kill him. And his damage output late game is one of the, I think, the best in the game uh, with Slater Fist and Battle Furies. Yes, also if you have good RNG. So... Yeah, the only thing though is he doesn't do single target damage yeah. against Spectre, so it's going to be a little difficult to kill him in the late game. And he may be feeling this game forced into something like a BKB, although probably, oh, this game is actually awful. He probably no. went to Lincoln's. Yeah, you, you have to go Lincoln's versus and all their single target. Yeah, it sucks that you have to go Lincoln's as well because there's all this Earthseeker shit where you want a BKB, but you can't go BKB and Lincoln's. You want to build Gloss Cannon as an Ember Spirit, and this game is going to be rough for that because you've got AA Ice Blast, you got all of the toolkit of Earthshaker, you got Winter's Curse and Primal Roar, so get wrecked, Ember Spirit. Yeah, on, on Ember, you, like, you want to avoid BKB and Lincoln's if you can. Lincoln's is considered pretty good on him now. I see a lot of Ember players pick it up versus even teams that don't have a lot of single target because it makes you be able to split push with no risk to yourself. But especially versus Winter Wyvern ult, Beastmaster ult, um, all these ultimates are going to be uh, really, really bad versus yeah. Lincolns. I am now a little bit afraid for Ember, and of course the Winter's Curse is something where Ember's going to take a while to get that Lincolns up. Wyvern can certainly help run a gank train on him with... Uh, the Winter's Curse, you can use Arctic Bone to get into a good position. But either way, we've got a game on our hands. This is game two between Complexity and Cloud9. Com uh, Complexity is up one game, and now we get to see the Invoker mid matchup. Now, Invoker traditionally loses mid matchups, but the oh my goodness, it's a he went Exhort. I have not seen a competitive in Exhort Invoker yet. It's all it's I get is Cross Wax. Patch. But, uh, but it's, it's harder, I thought, a lot harder. You have to hit shit like Sunstrike. 
Well, like I said earlier in the draft, it's gonna be really easy to hit sun strikes with uh, Winter Wyvern mm -hmm. setting up his own teammates a lot of the time, and along with that, you have uh, Tusk, you have uh, to set things up with ice shards and snowball, and oh it, it is kind of a lion, but sun strike isn't the only spell he has. What okay. you can do is you can still get. Uh, uh, Cold Snap and uh, Forge Spirits are going to be yeah. really effective for pushing with Undying. 100%. And Z-Freak just landing a really, really good Ice Shards that made the creeps hit the Wyvern for a while. Just just the little things making SVG's lane a little bit more difficult. But Zizzy getting a lot of farm on bottom. MSS not going to have the hardest of times. He'll be in experience range, I think, the whole time. But if he's out of line, he could take a lot of damage from Zizzy. And, but vice versa too, right? Because if he maxes Enchant Totem on the Earthshaker, which I don't expect, but you can do it and then go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Ember. Yeah, he's waiting. MSS, uh, he's killed one Enchant Totem now, but he still doesn't... He needs to go at least one in Aftershock, so it's going to limit his damage until like level four or five. Yeah, that happens, but... Still exciting to see Z-Freak going off to protect the rune. I don't know if they can actually go for this, though. And yeah, Z-Freak realizing it would be the danger zone, uh, or a bad spot for him if they went for it. So, although he places a warden, I don't know if that was sneaky enough. I feel like, wow, they didn't see it. Even though they have a ward there, they didn't check his inventory? No, I, I guess not. Maybe they also just didn't ping it. They might know, and they just said it verbally, right? That always happens. Yeah. So. Um, this is going to be an easy lane. For Ember Spirit, though, and so it's going to depend on how well Vitsu is able to farm in this lane. Uh, he looks to be doing okay right now. He's top of the net worth besides Invoker. So uh, as long as he's able to stay farming and he doesn't get ganked or killed right off, he'll be, he'll be fine. Yeah, and he, I mean, they're trying to run this hell lane against him, but they're really having a hard time getting the levels. This Tusk Undying lane, it's not scary until it has more levels. So I think it's a bit, a bit of a problem. Um, you need at least two, and probably more. Swindle actually hasn't skilled Tombstone or Soul Rip yet. Yeah, he's waiting to see if he needs it, because if uh, you need to save someone with Soul Rip, it's really useful. And Tombstone at level 1 is actually really bad now with yeah, the new it, patch. It scales <laughs> better into the late game technically, but it is sucky, sucky, sucky early now. Um, not sucky, it's just not as good as it used to be. Well, it used to be though that supports like couldn't kill it because they yeah. had no physical damage, but now supports can kill it really quickly. Even at level 4, it's only 7 attacks. So do you think that Cloud9's game plan here, just lay back, you know, even if it means that you lose a few towers, make sure that Ritsu is farming up a storm, and then once he has Radiance, maybe another item, um, have him fight? Well, this will depend on what his first item is. If he decides to go for an urn, and maybe a, a Ring of Akila, then of course they're going to be trying to take fights, and be using his ultimate to make sure that he's involved in all the kills, but if he decides to just go for a Radiance rush, then they're going to try to just... Secure the map, and get good defensive wards. It looks like our first blood's probably gonna be happening. Arctic Burn, also chilling touch. Z Freak is our first blood, and they wanna do some work onto Swindles. I don't know if they have another slow, though, and they're low on damage, even with this haste rune. Brax, he's just gonna die for it. He thinks he's got it. SVG's gonna help him out. Swindle does drop the tombstone, but he doesn't have anything else to back him up. Is that decay enough? We've got TPs in. The tombstone is down. Sunstrike off the mark, and SVG's gonna get out. Swindle does die, and turns out those eye shards block him out, but he's snowballing for it, and now here comes Invoker. Chessie coming in. One more auto-attack, we'll do it on SVG, they get it, and now Chessy, he's getting himself some kills. But not, I mean, they got first blood, Brax is pretty damn happy with that, and I think overall, Cloud9 coming out on top. Brax is doing really well, man, I thought he would be doing worse versus the Invoker, but he's sitting at 19 and 5, compared to Invoker's 25 and 4. So he's actually doing really well. I mean, you just, he's just, oh, actually, is he going Axes or Boar? Yeah, he's going the axes, axes build, where is the Sunstrike? Oh, the Ice Shards! Okay, Chessy. I may have had my doubts about the ability to land sun strikes, but all already doing pretty damn well. Now I wanted to ask you your opinion on something. Ritsu is not putting any points in des dispersion. I think I'm more used to seeing people go that, especially with the buff it got last patch. He and he's in a dual like... lane. He feels like he won't be the one getting pressured. He thinks that his supports are going to be the ones that are getting gone on, so he just wants to get as much damage as he can to try to secure kills. That's the reasoning behind it, I think. Okay. Um, I would I would have gone at least one point in it, but uh, it could could work out really well if they keep trying to go on supports and he's able to get kills with his dagger and uh, desolate damage. Yeah. 
So it's going to be interesting, and as you said, if he's not getting ganked now, they're trying to go in on Chessy. The cold feet, are they going to prop? They're trying to go on Brax as well, but I think Chessy is dead, and another nice kill for Brax. Doing mad work. AA technically gets it, but Brax being involved, he is going to be off to a fantastic start. And early Necronomicon, it's got, of course, uh, you know, a lot of what the Necronomicon does for most folks is it steals a bit of mana, it gives you that passive bonus attack speed aura, but it's also here against Invoker, going to really help them out. You know, maybe Invoker pops by in the Ghost Walk, you just open that book. I don't know, is it called opening the book? You pop the book? Wow. <laughs> what on earth happens there? Anyway, you read the spells, the incantations to summon Cthulhu, get your necro creeps out, and Invoker's not getting away. Yeah, and Invoker's going for Midas, which is really greedy here. I, I thought he might do it, but I was thinking maybe he goes for even a Necronom uh, Necronomicon of himself, like on himself, to uh, really do well versus Winter Wyvern because uh, necro books still burn mana on a yeah. Cold Embrace target, so it can be really good against. Uh, any mana dependent heroes and Beastmaster normally will have mana issues, especially going into the mid game. Same yeah. with Earth, Earth Shrieker, actually. I think he has decided he needs the levels. Also, this Invoker call, uh, like Helm is like really weird. His face is being like covered or something. I don't really understand. Um, like whatever he's wearing on his head. But yeah, I, I think understanding that the Midas he just wants levels to get everything up and maybe is a bit worried about getting form since Zizzy is going to be getting everything on the map. Yeah, and I think you'll be seeing a kill on MSS with Sunstrike and uh, Zizzy soon. You can set up Sunstrike really easily with Searing Chains, so it's yeah. going to be a really risky bot lane for Earthshaker now. Yeah, and MSS is playing pretty far back now after the initial he was up in Ember Spirit's face. But Ritsu is still farming up a storm. Only the Ember Spirit doing a bit better. I'm going to switch us over the net worth. We have Arctic Bone coming out on Swindles. There's a little bit of stabbing uh, with that Spectral Dagger, but holy cow. Arctic Bone does so much work. I mean, we know it's a good spell. That's why it's got a super long cooldown at early levels. And the gank train may, in fact, be going on Zizzy. There's the fissure. There's the primal roar. He remnants away. And while they have the Spectre Haunt coming out, Zizzy was too quick with his fingers. Eats a mango as well. Oh, and that's it, the power of Ember Spirit right there. <laughs> and Ritsu actually came in middle and took quite a bit of harass from Chessie. Not too, too much, but kind of an interesting choice to come in middle. He's gonna pop. Oh, Chessie off the mark with that one. I think he's one for three right now, but I mean, well, how many, what are you? Well, what does your hitting rate need to be with Sunstrike? That's the thing about that Sunstrike though is you're not really trying to just harass. What he's trying to do is he's saying if Ritsu walks forward right there to try to go for uh, a CS, that means I'll hit Sunstrike and I'll get a kill right there. And if he doesn't, and just backs off, then I don't really lose anything. Yeah, they're going, they're going for a big dive, but I don't know if this is going to work out for them. In comes Brax again. The Tombstone is still up. Here's MSS to finish off the Skywrath, and they'll get the Tombstone bounty as well. Really nice set of kills there for Complexity, and... Yeah. Oh, he's got a Sunstrike with the shards! They need a tiny bit more damage. Here comes the Snowball Salve. Is it going to save you? Echo Slam, but Swindle Melons gets the kill with the Decay. Sea Freak loses his life, but... Oh, Chessy. <laughs> I'm really beginning to like this guy. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, Sunstrike doesn't really matter if you hit. It's When he's doing stuff like that, it's just saying, okay, well, if they come up, then I can get a kill with Sunstrike because I precasted it, mm -hmm. and I don't have to try to like hit it when they're running away, and it's 50-50 chance, right? So Yeah, so very even still across the board in this game. I do have to say, though, that if this is going to be an early Radiance from Spectre, I'm a bit worried about Zizzy. Of course, early Radiance is something which can help knock off that Flame God Lickety Split. And... He's going for more of a fighting build. He went for a Ring of Killer. He's going for Treads right now, and he might even pick up an Urn later. So you won't see a Radiance that quickly. It might come around the 20-minute mark, but you won't be seeing any, like, 15, 16-minute Radiance from him. Still always a good item, it feels like. Um... Just does so much damage in an AoE, and also with Tusk on the opposing team, who might be getting a Blink Dagger at some point to save teammates, could certainly help to disable that. Although, bottom lane, what are you guys doing? They almost get a kill. They actually dropped the Tombstone, and now A is going to work on it. SVG kind of wants the Lost hit or something, but yeah, the, ta the tower's got it. He heals it up. Nice Soul Rip. Just Swindle being a pain. Actually, misses SVG there, so... Um, we have nobody top all of a sudden in 3 mid. Dude. Did they smoke for this? Uh, I think they're just trying to get middle tower. Middle tower is under attack. And Sky and uh, Tusk are rotating back mid to try to secure this tower for sure. Yeah. So um, it's suddenly a tower that gives a lot of map vision, but I don't know how... Well, I mean, it will help them set up ganks on Spectre a bit more easily, right? Yeah, and one thing, they do have a good ward behind the tower, so they just saw Ember Spirit's rotation to the top lane for sure. Yeah. 
And they saw his invis too. I thought it was super early ward. When did that come out? Uh, I don't know. I think it was when they were diving the tower to try to, uh, with the uh, uh, Brax hasting in earlier. Because it's almost done and down. Really nice of them to place that, and apparently I am still online. I will fix that. We have a smoke coming out. As I'm desperately trying to manage two things at once. There we go. No more. Oh gosh. Okay, that was scary. Sorry, I went offline because people were trying to send me friend requests and shit, and I almost my game started lagging, so I got really scared that it was like going <laughs> offline was booting me from the lobby or something. I reborn, please. <laughs> um, Ritsu smells this gank coming a mile away, even with the invis that was on Zizi, and so there's gonna be no cigar yeah. there. Well, they do have a good ward behind the tower. Both teams have wards behind the yeah. tier 1 up there. So. Can they catch him? They do have the snowball, they land the ice shards, it's coming out, but Ritsu can just spectral dagger across that, so... They have deterred some of his farm. Unfortunately, the kill would be nicer. And Ember went for a fighting build. He didn't, like, normally you see bots nowadays on Ember in a split push, to farm the map, but he went for treads, which is the kind of, I'm gonna five man with my team and try to yeah. get kills that way. I like it, I understand. Oh, Swindlemelon's taking a lot of damage. Fissure to help set up the uh, uh, cold feet, they don't even need it! Haunt in as well! Splendor Blast doing good work, and now they're gonna probably just trade towers here. Chessie might be able to get the mid one as well, though. What are our towers? Top tower is pretty full of health, and bottom tower is too, so it looks like they're coming back to stop Chessie from pushing that mid lane. I don't think... I think you try to contest top um, mid's gonna go down to Forge Spirits eventually, and right now they're going on mid. Yeah, Snowball coming out, there's a Deafening Blast as well, one more auto attack will do it! Oh, so a nice little play there, and they were probably gonna get this tower, there is a Glyph, and they're TPing down bottom, there's action here as well! Searing Chains does lats on Ritsu, he's going for the big Remnant Bomb, Ritsu's trying to TP out though, Sunstrike, not enough damage, Ritsu gets out by the skin of his teeth, and now it looks like there's a Z Freak in trouble, Echo Slam to finish him off. And Skyrath, Vlad wants to do something, but I don't know if he's in the right spot. He's actually caught between two heroes. MSS has no mana, though. So perhaps Chessie could help out here, but Chessie also a bit low, so... That was really good for uh, complexity, although they still lost the Tusk. They got two towers, both the tier 1 t no, mid and the tier 1 top, mm -hmm. and they got a tower deny on bottom. Oh, so I didn't quite catch the deny. Uh, C9, yeah. I think Undying denied it. Well played. So Undying also going for... Early Guardian Girl. Oh, Brax is going down, takes way too much damage, and this game is significantly faster paced than the last one, to say the least. Well, they really want that Necro Creep. Oh, yeah, Snowball at Z Freak. Mm. That's gonna be good for him. Getting some farm. Uh, yeah, go on. nice pick on Brax as well, since he was the one farming up a storm on the C9 lineup, and now Chessie don't, firmly in top control of the net worth. Chot. Oh, that's what switches. Oh, but Jesus, as I'm taking a look around at what switches stuff around, we have Invoker getting. Okay, I can't even be blamed for that. That was a sun strike. <laughs> yeah, no, that was Empty Spirit set up chains on him, so you get a free sun strike. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not even. I'm. I'm not even mad at myself for missing that one. Uh, I was trying to quickly show us uh, heroes' amounts of gold they're saving up. Actually, there's a lot saved up on Invoker. I don't know if he might be thinking of a blink for more positioning, or if this is just Necro Book business. Also, he dropped a bunch of items to invoke the... Can you tell me what he was just doing there? Uh... I... Don't... Oh, what do you mean? He dropped his full stuff and his Null Talisman to invoke Forge Spirits? I'm confused. Oh, that's... Oh, we have a Searing Chains on to Brax. A Blast is coming, though. Sunstrike as well. They get it, but Brax still isn't dead. He finally goes down, but now there's a Winter's Curse, and there's a lot of damage coming out from Ritsu. He's going to get himself two kill involvements, and this is big. The Deafening Blow is too late, and Chessie may even go down for this. He's trying to walk it off and get away, but he's taking way too much damage, and Chessie's going to go down. Soul Rip keeping him alive. Is it enough? It doesn't look like it. He's wandering, wandering away. Splinter Blast. Oh, it's going to get the kill, and that is a huge bounty on the Invoker. Luckily, Swindle Melons does manage to get himself out, and Wow, Forge Spirit's just ripping through SVG. Um, yeah, and by the way, I, I see what you meant now is uh, he dropped it because someone was arcane boots. Oh, okay, of, of, of course, of course. I, I just was like, I only saw that he did it and then he cost it, and I was like, I don't think that's what you want to do with your mana, but yeah, there were arcane <laughs> boots on Swindle Melons, of course. So. I, th I thought you meant he was just like dropping, so he would use his spells, drop all his No, and it makes no, spells. yeah, it makes no <laughs> sense. That's what I saw, and yeah, I forgot about Swindle Melons having the arcanes. Ballsy pick, considering complexity's history with dropping items, but happens. You, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> oh come on! What? I think that's another one of the big plays from Ti. And now, oh, Ritsu's just gonna TP out. Um, 
But yeah, he has a lot of gold saved up. MSS also getting close to his blink dagger, has his wyvern. and Brax looks like he's going down again. Can they do any sort of return kill? It looks like Brax is going to down. Z-Freak explodes, and Chessie, he's not in danger of splitting at all, so he should just be able to walk this off. He may have to invoke something. No, he's going to be fine Maybe with the soul rip. Even dropping the tombstone to make sure they don't keep chasing. Yeah, that, that's a good kill. Like Tusk for uh, Beastmaster is a great trade for them. Yeah. Uh, Retsu is going to save up for the Radiance. He's uh, like 3,000 off right now. Uh, but it'll still be a pretty good time to Radiance considering he went treads and uh, we have a killer first. So. Yeah. Him getting those kill involvements, he's actually been involved in six kills, which is really nice here for Cloud9, I think. Um, he did also get a lot of farm you can see from his cs up top lane but he started being contested and so being able to get back into this really nice aa is also really close to his midas so cloud nine in a much better position this game than they were last game even though complexity has a bit of a lead i feel like cloud nine is certainly working their way towards having a great late game and they have supports oh, that scale super well like undying is kind of late game uh, Undying is better now once you get Aghanims because you can steal 10 strength from each uh, Decay cast, but he's still not that good. Skywrath Mage falls off a uh, really hard late game, so for Complexity to win this game, they have to make sure that they hit their timings uh, around like 30 minutes or so, especially with Ember Spirit. He's not going... Uh, for late game, he went for drums. We have a nice Echo Slam coming out, but Zizzy's already away. Looks like they might be able to get Chessie. No, the Ice Pulse does hit, but will he go down? Searing Chains comes out. They drop the Tombstone, but now the Winter's close. Chessie's the one you want the damage on, though. And maybe they can disengage smoothly here, but in comes Skyrath. Vlad, you might not be where you want to be. Swindles is coming in as well. Another Searing Chains, and Chessie doing good work with the help of the zombies. Can he get a kill, though? That'll be the name of the game. Earthshaker does finally go down, and they get the Decay, killing off Beastmaster. Do they have more follow-up? I don't think they chase here, and what is going on? Wyvern is going to escape out. Oh gosh, they're still going for it. They remnanted forwards. Another remnant bomb, and that's AA. I really thought that was a really dominant team fight for C9. It looked good. Chessie had a nice force to F downhill to save himself, and uh, like all of C9 got really low from the tombstone and Undying. Yeah. Undying's really good in uh, delayed Dying's long fights, and that's what they took. Attack. Yeah, he actually showed up pretty late to that one, but ended up making it work out. Dyer's bottom tower. And uh, Ritsu is still really far off Radiance, so it's going to be an issue if they try to 5-man soon before he gets it. Do you think it's just a case of the game plan for Complexity? Oh, Snowball into Sunstrike into Walrus Punch, and that was beautiful. I always do enjoy that type of action. And that's the power of this Exoid Invoker. You can set up so many kills around the map. Yeah, higher, much higher damage output and just something where, um, as you mentioned, he really has the team to back him up for this type of thing. It's something where I, we haven't been seeing it as much because you're not seeing the easy ways to get the sun strikes, but here Chessie has a lot of support. Or follow up, if he sun strikes someone, ice shards can come out from Z Freak and you can get the kill from a long way away without endangering yourself. And yeah, so easy early Roshan as we see with Forge Spirits. They don't even have minus armor for this, they're just uh, taking it with Forge Spirits and Chessie. So, yeah, oh, yeah, you that's what I mean. The Forge Spirits have their oh, little... We, we gotta be careful. Cloud9 is smoking up, though. They but there is the Tombstone on the high ground for a little bit of extra damage. And is Cloud9 gonna go in? They, of course, have the Hawk. They can see all of this coming out. Oh, that was good. Tombstone killed Hawk. Oh. Wow, that's so sad that Tombstone kills Hawk. They do get a Fissure, but it's already picked up by Chessie, and he is going to have a blast here. Now he is nigh unkillable. Let's see if they can kill off the Wyvern. Chessie does have a Blink, but you probably don't want to Blink into such a bad spot. And with the Glimmer Cape to boot. Not going to bother chasing. Uh, Ritsu is still farming. He's coming up on his Relic. He's around 400 off, so that's going to be important uh, to make sure that if he dies, he doesn't lose a ton of his gold. And, yeah, what I meant is... The Forge Spirits do minus armor. That's on, what I meant on version. They don't do it on version. They don't do it on version. Oh gosh, this no. is my lack of invoker knowledge showing. <laughs> I should have just played that one off cool and made it look like I knew what I was talking about. Also, I've tried the... Oh, there we go. We got a nice little ice blast. Doesn't actually end up hitting Chessie. I try not to do the um, act like I'm right strat, which um, I think folks... Sometimes I see folks doing in uh, games I play, but yeah, as you uh, said, I, I didn't know they didn't I'm hit Roshan. I, I'm pretty sure they don't because they've never done it for me. And when yeah, I no, and I checked his debuffs. debuffs. He didn't have the debuff on him. He only had the zombies, so I think you're right, and I just learn something new every day, folks. Now we've got a oh, little bit of an ult. Let's see if there's any follow-up, though. It doesn't Wait. look like it. So a taunt that was just kind of used as... 
It's unfortunate for two reasons, right? He won't have it for something else, even though I do believe he just got the relic. Yes. That was a miscommunication, I think. Oh. Uh, he thought MSS was going to blink Echo, and he tried to hunt in, but MSS decided that it was a bad fight. Yeah. So, I also think it's unfortunate, of course, because now he doesn't have an escape mechanism, which is part of why he has to play it so yeah. safe. Complexity are gonna probably push down top now that it's on cooldown for 80 seconds and yes. at this at this point They probably have his ultimate timed so they'll know exactly when it will be up And they've been playing both of these games that we've seen they seem to have a game plan Just stick to it and really executing it well I'm not quite sure what is this seems like a very different cloud nine than the ones we've been seeing win all of the qualifiers and so on They've been slumping recently at least uh, when I've seen and heard but I still thought they were going to be strong, but Complexity is just showing Oh, that. we have a very dead Zizzy. Can he get away here? He's got Ice Jeez. Balls ticking on him. I don't think it's enough. It's not. He's fine. Yep. That's it's Echo down, too. Yeah. It's going to be really important. And, Boys. oh, Ritsu. This is... Will they catch him? They will have a Snowball Warrus Punch. He does manage to use that, but Warrus Punch, Sunstrike as well. He does manage oh. to dodge it, but now there is the Mystic Flare, which he walks right into, and that is a dead specter for you. When teams have slumps like these, do you think it's just the natural progression? You win a bunch, maybe you get into a bit of a rut, people figure out your play style because you're the team to beat, or, you know, do you think it's actually indicative of a larger problem? Uh, I think I think it's just people are starting to realize how they play. They were really strong when the patch came out because I think they figured out the patch maybe a little better than other teams. And that was also the same for like E-Wolves. Um, they were really strong when the patch came out because they were picking Slurder Dazzle, I think one of the first teams to do it, and other teams hadn't realized how like strong Slurder was and stuff like that. Um, I think they'll still be a strong team coming up into the Frankfurt Major and uh, those types of games. Uh, we'll see how they like recover. But, like, the game isn't over right now, they could still bring it back. No, yeah, it's, yeah, there's a lot of game to go. We're only 23 minutes in, and we have a high ground siege, though, coming out of complexity. They should be able to do some good damage with all of their units to this tower. I don't know if they'll successfully siege unless they get a pick off here, which feels like C9 would have to make a mistake. And actually, Chessy taking a lot of damage. Of course, he has Aegis, but you don't want to just use it, you know, you don't want to go down to a Wyvern. But now Brax yeah. in return, taking a lot. It's it's really difficult to push this tower versus Wyvern, Beastmaster, Earthship, AA. AA. Yeah. <laughs> they have ridiculous high ground defense. Although AA has to pop his wand to get enough mana, I think he should just stick in the fountain. And uh, you want to put out those Ice Vortex, but you also want a really big AA blast, and you can definitely hit a five-man one at this choke point. So trying to play it safe, and at the same time, Complexity just trying to slow siege this CZ actually hopping up, hopping back, and they'll have to wait for the next creep wave. They do have the Aegis for another minute, though. They have to be careful here. They've actually got under a minute on it, and unless they took that timing very carefully, they may back out. And the thing with high grounding against a team like this is Spectre is still just sitting at the other side of the map farming, yeah. and he can get to that fight right away. And Always. that's the... It's the thing with high grounding versus a Spectre team. Oh, SVG is gonna take the Sunstrike again. Chessie's walking it out, has a Splinter Blast thrown at him, which isn't maybe the best way to use it. And they're probably gonna back out on this one, deciding that they're yeah, too close to the Aegis's die time and rec reclamation time. My apologies, folks. Um, and Zizzy's gonna, gonna go back gonna down. Radiance. He'll have Radiance for the next fight. Yeah, and Zizzy, while he does have the Battle Fury, the average timing this patch is 25 minutes. He does have it a bit earlier, but he doesn't have a damage item yet. And while Spectre's Haunt will give them a lot of illusions, Radiance looking better than the output damage from the Ember right now. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, most Embers this patch go for Boots of Travel, Ring of Aquila, into Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. But he went for Treads, Drums, and then Battle Fury. So I think that's going to be a little more expensive, which can make up for why he has the Battle Fury a bit yeah. earlier. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the the bots are more expensive. Yeah, I understand. So we've got a Glimmer Cape on Skywrath. We've got a nice amulet on... Oh, medallion, sorry, not an amulet. We might have a nice gank here on SVG. And yeah, Glimmer Cape not going to help you. And they drop a ward just in case. So, But looking around AA, he's got almost one component of the Aghanims. And while we talked about this, they really do have great high ground defense, especially if AA can get an Aghanim. It's, it's a while away. But once you have that 17 seconds, that debuff lasting on people, it just makes your team fight. If the team fight goes for long, you win. Oh, for sure. I, I like to say, though, Invoker is going to be really important this game because if you look at the network chart, he's 5,000 above yeah. the next person. And it'll be... Interesting to see what he goes. I think he's going for... Well, he went for BKB. 
Not just 5,000 net worth above, he's also highest hero level. This be, uh, this Midas doing good, good work for him. And uh, he has bots up too, so he can kind of deal yeah. with Spectre being all over the place. I, I really like this BKB pickup by Chessy. Um, it allows him to kind of go high ground without any risk of dying himself. He can still get roared, but as long as he's able to be glimmered and saved, he can get his BKB off and just walk out. Yeah. Um, so Beastmaster has level 3 Necronomicon though, and we do finally have the Radiance up on Spectre. Wyvern did not end up going that Blink Dagger goes a Glimmer Cape, much safer of an option, and is also probably working on a 4 staff. Maybe a Yules? Yules is always a nice item, I feel, against Ember Spirit, since it can knock off that Flame God, but I would expect a 4 staff worried about positioning here against Ice Shards. Yeah, the issue is though, if you Yules Ember, he normally can get a Remnant off and get out really quickly. Um, Right now, Complexity are taking a smoke, and they have a DD on Ember. So this could go really bad for Cloud9 if they get caught by this. Yeah, but will they get caught by it? Cloud9, their spidey senses are tingling, and Ritsu is like, Look, I don't see anyone on the map. This is bullshit. I'm out. <laughs> so he's been doing a really good job of that, I feel. And of course, these are experienced players. Even though I believe Ritsu is pretty young, um, I think a lot of them have played a crap ton of Dota and just know when their time is up from the standpoint yeah. of where their positioning is. It's true for both teams, though. I mean, uh, one, four, three, seven, and Brax, and uh, are all. Oh yeah, they are some of the oldest members, time. right? Yeah, and when we're talking, MSS, Mitsu and SVG are kind of new, but yeah, and it's actually, oh, I think, uh, when we talked to, I I managed to interview Jenkins after their win over Cloud Nine, and he was talking about how they do consider Cloud Nine this hardest opponent, just because they have so many experienced players. It's very hard to beat them if you don't. If you don't win your lanes, you lose the game no matter what, because they will just outbeat you if the game goes for longer. So, yeah, nice. And that's something Complexity has done really well. They've made sure both games that they've been able to win their lanes and do uh, really well in that sense and yeah. make sure that they have an early lead. Even though it's not feeling as bad as last game, they are, again, 10,000 net worth ahead, 7.5 thousand, almost 10,000 experience ahead. Complexity is just... Making sure they're ahead, staying ahead. I mean, the Spectre, it's, Spectre is a hero that if a game goes long, right, Spectre wins. But Complexity is trying to do their damnedest to give them no breathing, breathing room on this lineup. I think this is Complexity's timing, though. They get this Roshan, and they need to try to take high ground. And if high ground fails, the game's going to get really difficult for them. Yeah. And they have maybe one failure, maybe two even, before suddenly, with the rubber band effect and everything, they will be out of the game, just kind of slowly losing it. But Invoker's gonna work on it this time, they actually do have minus armor, and yeah, you're right, there's no Forge Spirits debuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm so, so bad at Dota. But no, um, these things happen to the best of us, and yeah, we will be seeing probably this Roshan going down now with the Medallion help. Um, they have a really good ward around bottom for complexity too, so this should be an easy tier 2 to get. And then they can transition that into a high ground. I really doubt Cloud9 will fight it just because it is that not horrible choke point. Both of the tier 2s, you know, a lot of the tier 2s except the ones in mids, have really bad um, choke pointing and high ground access for the team defending. Uh, nice little balance that Dota likes to do, so... And Ember so, with Alacrity and a DD is he, doing a... Yeah. He took that so fast, I was actually surprised. Normally, Ember's not much of a right clicker, but when you add on the DD and Alacrity, yeah. he's, uh, and he's hitting really hard. It's actually being really nice to him. We were talking about how you don't want to have to, you would like to build Gloss Cannon, but with Alacrity, with other um, buffs we've got running around, if we do end up seeing Necrobooks or whatever, it's really going to help him, right? You've got, it's like, I, you weren't here for it, but I had a game earlier yesterday with Ember Spirit and Magnus, and it's just something where you don't need to buy as much damage. You can go a little bit safe because you have teammates who will help you out with it. Oh yeah, for sure on that Ember-Magnus combo too. It's it's like two free battle carries right off the bat. Yeah. So, Either way, we are having a bit of a slow moment. They do have quite a bit of time on the Aegis. Probably just want to make sure all of their lanes are pushed up, I guess, so that they don't have Ritsu applying pressure somewhere. Yeah, I'd like to see Undying get an Aghanim soon. He went for Mech and then Glimmer Cape, um, and he's not finishing the Guardian Greaves, so I think uh, Aghanims would be really good here to take away all the strength of their heroes, as it is, it's not like damage based, it just takes away health. It's not a, like, uh, Spectre Dispersion won't negate it. Yeah. And uh, taking a look around, I don't see any big new item pickups other than the Blink coming out of Beastmaster. 
They're defending, while they are defending their own high ground, and often you're like, oh, do you really need to blink? The enemies are coming to you. I think it can certainly help you get the jump on someone with good positioning. And oh, there's an Echo Slam coming out. Swindle Melon's gonna be going down, but if they get MSS here, I don't think it would have been worth it. The high ground defense is gonna be so lacking without MSS, and he's dead. Can they find Ritsu? Probably not. He's gonna just TP out, working on that heart, and I think this is the timing now. Even though you don't have Swindle Melon's, the Earthshaker being down is a bigger priority. Yeah, and, uh... Zizzy has a crit, and uh, Zifik has a solar crest too. Oh already, yeah, so. baby crit coming out, and no one's gonna be hitting Zizzy with that solar crest on him. Well, you're gonna hit him a bit, but not as much. <laughs> yeah, Invoker has a lot of gold. I'll be interested to see if he buys an Aghanims for this push. I feel like Aghanims is really good on Invoker now. It makes all your spells do more damage, steal more mana, or stun for longer. The only and... downside, I think, is some people maybe not as experienced with the Invoker Ags. I saw Black pick one up in a, uh, the other day when I was casting Summit, Ameri uh, Summit C. He missed a couple spells for about five minutes. While he was getting oh. the timings. Oh, Primal Roar onto Zizzy. A Bloss gonna follow up and the Horn, but he manages to remnant away. They left a second of timing and now Z Freak going in. I think you're a little bit of a dead Tusker. Do they have any sort of follow up? No, they've decided to back out on complexity. You were saying about Invoker. Is that when people get Aghanims on them, they feel the need that they need to like, use all spells right away. So they like use a spell, invoke, use a spell, right? And so they won't get the like maximum use out of their spells if they had just waited and waited for the right time to use it. Yeah. Um, I find people spam out their invoker spells too quickly with Aghanims. So. so you need to be wary of that. Yeah, and we've got a pause and a DC. That's always exciting. Um... Looking at the state of the game, I know we're discussing how Complexity's window is closing. But I think, uh, well, after that kill, I think it's harder to push up now, right? Yeah. They still have, like, most of the Tier 3 top down. So if they decide to wait for Tusk to get up and push, push with the Aegis, um, we might even see a Necro book on Invoker just to spam units on the high ground without risking themselves and try to slow push. Um, it's going to be risky though, because when you're slow pushing, Mitsu's going to be able to farm wherever he wants. And he can come into the fight at any time. Yeah. And it is the power of Spectre. Also, I really don't want to downplay Spectre. She did get a Dispersion buff last patch, which I feel like is part of why she's getting so much play. Um, and also yeah. having the AA with her is really nice, because you can Ice Blast someone, and as we've seen a couple times already, you haunt... The Ice Blast hits someone, uh, you haunt in, you get the follow-up damage, and then you can just be out of the fight again. So, uh, as people shatter, always good fun. Yeah, it's really easy to get pickoffs this game, because Earthshaker and Beastmaster alone can both just run around the map, and with AA Blast and Spectre, you can almost guarantee a kill on any solo target. Yeah. Fun facts, it's National Cat Day, apparently. Um, <laughs> do you think Tusk should maybe be doing a little bit better since it's National Cat? Is he a polar bear or a cat? He kind of looks like a cat. He's, to me. he's not a cat. What, I think he's, he's a, a cat. cat. I'm pretty sure he's a cat. No I'm a cat, a cat expert as a llama. I have a degree in other animals, so I know he's a cat. How about Beastmaster the boar? Kind of looks like a cat, a really ugly cat. Uh, <laughs> you're just, you're just. I'm, I'm reaching. I am cats. reaching. Yes, I am reaching really next, hard. Here. <laughs> next, you're gonna be like Beastmaster's hawk looks like a. Cat. Earth Jacob, so a cat he's kind of like a cow cat. You know the famous <laughs> moo meow that you see sometimes. He's actually <laughs> got a really huge nose. Yeah, that happens to some of us. Either way, back into the game. Sorry, pause, and we're we're uh, seeing that Cloud Nine's window of time being extended. I also, I you worry here about things like. Um, having a good start and then losing late game to a Spectre, I feel like also really demoralizes you emotionally. Yeah, when when you're going into game three, Cloud9, if they win this game, are going to be really hyped up. They just want a uh, late game with Spectre. They just uh, kind of came back and they were the underdogs for this game, even though I guess for the series they were not the underdogs. But um, And then coming into uh, for complexity, like... It's going to be really demoralizing and trying to win the next game, even drafting wise, you're going to maybe ban out the Spectre because you don't want to lose to it again and that could free up some other heroes for Cloud9 to pick up, so it's going to be really important uh, like for game 3 whether or not uh, they can recover from taking a hard loss yeah. if they do if, lose this game. Yeah, if they do lose it, there's still time. They have about... Oh, I do not believe they have enough time to push off of this Aegis. 
I think you're right. They have to throw Forge Spirits at it if they'd want to do anything, but they only have two minutes or less than two minutes before it's reclaimed. 30 second death timer on Tusk Catman. And <laughs> you... Catman. Yeah, I don't think they can push, though. I think Complexity has to wait for the next Roshan, and if it's a long Roshan timer, Cloud9 is very happy about that. Oh, for sure. Um, we'll see. If, if we go late game, maybe Ember Spirit can get damage items, and they might be able to... Uh, even win late game, like, I, I never want to count out Ember Spirit late game just because of the fact that if he crits, crits your team once and you're clumped together, then it's all of a sudden you've killed their entire team, and <laughs> and Spectre can kind of do the same thing with his ultimate, but it's more cooldown uh, based. Spectre can only take a fight once every, like, 100 something seconds, where Ember can take a fight every time that he's, uh, He's there. Everyone's like, he's got a thing called Walrus Punch. Clearly he's a walrus. None of you have seen a walrus then. I've seen a walrus give birth. He looks nothing like a walrus. Come on, guys. You've seen a walrus give yeah. birth? Yeah, my, <laughs> I, my sister studies... Um, what's the right way to say it? My sister studies animal behavioral sciences, and so whenever we have the opportunity, she likes to try to make me go do animal things with her. And so um, a while back, she was like, let's go watch the walruses have babies. And I was like, what? I didn't want... Okay. So we went and watched walruses have babies. It's not fun. <laughs> it's actually, like, really creepy because the male walruses are like, hey, honey, and the female walruses are like, I'm trying to give birth over here, sir. Can you please calm down? <laughs> yeah, it's it's really awkward. But that's what happens when your sister studies animal behavioral stuff. She's getting a PhD in that. She's gonna be poor her entire life. It's great. Either way, um, back looking at this game. Midas uh, is halfway to that Aghanim Scepter. I really think this thing can change around the game. He scales so well in the late game, as does Wyvern. And one thing that AA can do is, if he decides and they need the Aghanims for the push, he can just sell his Midas, and then he's only like 800 off. Or you sell it when you get to your like last component, you can be like, okay, well I need it now, and I'll sell my Midas, I'll just pick up the Ags, and then I'll bank on that we can win a fight right now, and I won't need the Midas for later. Yeah, so, gonna be nice. This is always really unfortunate as well. I hope we don't end up having to unpause with someone AFK. That's always... Unfortunately. Well, I'm sure, like, Chessie can just micro him. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> okay, you joke about that, but I'm pretty sure there have been professional games that have been won with DCs with other players microing them. Um, well, I've seen it. I remember there was an EG game where they lost, like, two players, and they were just... They were just all playing each other's heroes, so... You know, it can happen. Yeah. So, certainly something that can happen, uh, yeah. Oh, I see some folks wondering how you read the Roshan timer. Oh, I know this. So basically, this this is the when the Roshan has died mark is the top of it. This is th each tick is a minute. Roshan must spawn between eight minutes and eleven minutes. Uh, I think because of map hacks, they show it as eight minutes uh, here. But actually, the moment the Aegis is reclaimed, the Roshan is decided on how long its spawn time is. I don't know how that works with map hacks, but I'm pretty sure a lot of these things are in place for it's... things. Uh, I can. Ex I think it's because like if you have something set up to like watch your game. Oh yeah. With the yeah. two minute delay, it'll yeah. show. But it actually does show you. There's a pop out that comes out here when the Aegis is reclaimed. That will say it pops out from the right. I'm showing it on my screen, so I can't show you. But yeah, it's just like it'll be like five minutes and twelve seconds till the Aegis. But yeah, as you said, I think it's for map hacks. And then um, this is the three minute mark. Of course, that's the six. Aegis is always reclaimed at the five, and then at the eight minute mark, it'll show us when how long the spawn time was but it isn't it's actually already predetermined as much as this clock might look like it so yeah gonna be <laughs> solid but yeah um that's how you read the clock just trying to bust out some knowledge <laughs> we are still paused i'm i'm running low on weird shit to talk about walruses and birthing and oh yeah and yeah and, and then like so we go and we go and we watch the walruses have all these babies and stuff and then like oh it was so terrifying so this one Mother, like, they don't, of course it's animals, they want to care about the babies which are related to them, they don't super care about the babies that aren't related to them. So if one of the dominant males knows that he hasn't impregnated certain females, he'll kill their babies, and so then all the females cluster together to, like, protect their babies from being killed, or... Oh, it was, like, actually terrifying, and I'm like, why do you want to watch this? And my sister's just like, yeah, this is the good shit, and I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> Fun facts about my sister as well, when she was doing her research in Africa, um... 
because she has to spend half her year in Africa doing research on uh, chimpanzees. She does research um, involving, she actually has to ca- do poop cakes, but that's another story. She <sighs> got, she was living in a tent because they didn't have enough housing for all the researchers. But my sister's like, oh, I'll come even though there's no housing. She got a room because a, a lady was mauled by a lion. <laughs> yes, that is how my sister got permanent housing in her first, in her like fourth research trip. This nice little old lady gets mauled by a lion, and then they're like, "Well, the room's free now." My sister's like, "I'll take it. I'll take it, guys." So that's encouraging. I, uh, I don't. Yeah, I some some people are more adventurous than others. You decide. I'm not decide. Yeah, I'll reconnect. Yeah, excellent. I don't know what happened. So. So yeah, um, but yeah, this is this is my uh, sister is very adventurous. I play video games online. I sometimes go on hikes, and that's about as it, oh, I I walk around the city at night. That's as about as adventurous as I am, folks. So <laughs> it's like everyone's just talking about their life. Like I do this, I do that. You know. Yeah, no, my sister. Yeah. Is... <laughs> my sister posts beautiful, beautiful pictures of exotic places, and I'm just like, yeah, I I sometimes eat a lot of food. I had deep dish pizza today. Yeah. Oh, deep. Di- oh, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> oh, I, I. I can't condone deep dish. Oh. Deep my dish pizza. girlfriend is from Chicago, and her parents sometimes send us um deep dish pizza because, I guess they worry about us eating right, and so they send us you know a layer of carbs with fat with more carbs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's up with it. They send us like candy and shit as well, and then like. I don't know. It's really weird. My girlfriend's really tall. She's 6'1", so it's like she can eat whatever she wants. And then I'm like, I'm 5'1", guys. You cannot send us all this junk food. I'm gonna get fat. And then your girlfriend will be dating an uggo. And why would- who would want that? Um, yeah. <laughs> what else can we say about the game at this point? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, uh, there's not much to talk about. No. Yeah. We, we have... Chessie's doing well. <laughs> can- can they win off the back of a formed invoker? Let's say this game has to go super long. Can you, like... Split push invoker with all of your babies that you pop out from your necro books, your forge spirits, if he chooses to go that route? I mean, he gets really good late, like, he's he has a long way to go because he can get all his wex maxed out, like, uh, for late game, he'll have agonims probably, so his spells get even stronger, like, he's not a weak late game hero, but of course you're going up against Spectre and you're going up against Beastmaster, who has really long disable for late game, it's, it's gonna be tough, put it like that. Yeah. It looks like we might have to unpause, so gonna be going into this even though we are down a person. So, as you said, I think between the four of them, they should be able to micro this hero. As we say, this Vlad's hero hasn't- there we go. Yeah, they, they ping it out, they're like, Vlad's not moving, maybe nobody's on this. But we're back into it. <laughs> um, it does- oh, thank you, Networth girl, for, uh... Lying a little. Um, what do you do here? Your- your complexity, you're not gonna be able to push- you have to wait on Roshan, right? Or can you try something sneaky? Uh, I mean, if you get a good smoke and maybe pick off the Spectre, force a buyback, and then wait for your next Aegis. And uh, Chessie did pick up the Aghanims right now, and they look to be going top. Yeah. And, uh, looks like Z Freak is the one. Oh, yeah, control groups. Well, he had them in a control group, I think, but now he stopped. Ember also has a full data list, so, like, yeah. they, have a, they have a good amount of items. Like, this is this is the time. If they can push Hagman right now and they can win a fight, like, this game can be easily won, but yeah. if they fail this high ground push, then it gets, uh, it gets difficult. So they're, they're thinking about going in, they're actually going for top the tower that they have a bit of damage on already. So. And I think, I think AA needs to, like, if it comes down to it, I think you sell your Midas, you sell your boots, and you yeah. get nags. No, 100%, like. I agree. I think you, I think it is time. To get rid of some items, make sure you get that Aghanims up, because it is such a powerful Aghanims upgrade. If, if he sells Midas, Boots, and Cloak, he'll have it. And I think that's what you have to do at this point. Like, yeah. it's, it's so important for this Aghanim push. So, we're going to be seeing the creeps make quick work of by that Battle Fury. We've got the Ice Vortexes coming down. I always like to draw pictures with them, but that is not important here. They just want the coverage for amped magic damage. That is a very dead hawk. Oh, goodness, if they kill off SVG here before he gets off his Winter's Curse, he's going to be able to walk it off, but he took a lot of damage and was very close. At the same time, the Tombstone is down now for this push and Invoker. He's getting low on those spells. He does have the Aghanims up. He bought out on the Invoker. Yeah. Chessie's bought out, oh, Windows Curse no. coming out on him, there is the Horn as well, Zizzy doing a lot of work to him, Abel's, he's in the Snowball though, Seafreak saving his life, but into an immediate Echo Slam, and maybe that wasn't the save that they wanted, Skyrath goes down as well, and Zizzy realizing they need to get the hell out of there, he has an Invis Rune, but he has lost all of his team, and Swindle's slowly falling as well. 
Disastrous team fight. I thought the snowball was a save, but it was a death trap. That was great by C9, because uh, Chessie's Aegis expired exactly when they went. Like, they had it down to the science. Oh. They knew exactly when to go. And then and Chessie died, and he didn't have an Aegis. That's how they win that fight. Yeah, and suddenly... This game, it's we're reaching the tipping point. Um, 30 minutes isn't quite there, but I believe at games over like 40 minutes, Spectre has a significantly higher win rate. Um, Ember does have a good one too, but the rest of these heroes for complexity dropping off. Your Mystic Flare isn't so good on a Skywrath as the game progresses. People have Glimmer Capes, people have health, and don't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried for complexity. I think this is when you change your game plan. You say, okay, we're not going to be able to push high ground right now. So we just need to take a fight out of base, maybe get a small pick off, maybe when they try to push our high ground late game with Ember, and that's how we're going to win this game. Because I don't know if they if they lose another high ground push, then I think the game almost becomes unwinnable. Yeah. Uh, Spectre's going to have a lot more gold. Oh than... gosh, Z Freak. Oh, sorry, Swindle Melons, he's in a bit of... Mm, they're all backing out, never mind. There is a smoke here backing up Swindles, and I think perhaps that movement where Swindles wasn't acting afraid, giving away the fact that he had backup. And I think Z-Freak is microwing Vlad right now. Yeah, yeah. he's been doing it. Oh, Wyvern gets the last hit on the tower. Swindles went for the deny, but using that Arctic Bone, and yeah. It looks like Z-Freak just has him on follow, and is going to try to micro the two of them. I'm sure, I believe Z-Freak also plays a lot of Chen, so I can't imagine that's awful. In the mid lane, though, we're going to have the Sunstrike hitting oh, on Brax. Here comes an A blast, though, and the follow-up. Where is it? Now, Chessie's in a lot of trouble. He's going to go down to the creeps. They managed to catch out Brax again, but do they have the damage? They sure as hell do. Cold Feet going to proc on Zizzy. Where is the follow-up. Skyrath has also killed off Spectre. I completely missed that one because I was focusing on Zizzy. Do you know what happened in the back lines there? Um, yeah, Tusk and uh, uh, Skyrath just like dumped everything they had on the Spectre and they killed him off. Yeah, and that Walrus and punch from the Catman doing work. I'd just like to say that was, that was so lucky for C9. Chessy actually missed his spell mm -hmm. and he tried to um, uh, meteor and use uh, Deafening Blast, but he missed Deafening Blast, so instead of going back with the Meteor to take damage, yeah. um, he came towards him and got a roar. So, really lucky, but at the same time, wow, they're going on this tower instead of the other one. Zizzy might go down here! He's taking way too much damage in this AA Ice Blast. It's with the Aghanims upgrade and Echo Slam coming out. The dunk from MSS and they get two. This is what we were talking about. The Snowball in with the Mystic Flare, but the Glimmer Cape's up. Not going to do anything in the Cold Embrace to boot. Yeah, you can drop a Sentry in their base, but it's not going to be enough. And Z Freak and Vlad on the back lines. I think Z Freak going down. Whoever's microing Vlad should probably just make sure he gets the hell out of there. There is a Glimmer Cape, but where is this detection? Do they have a gem? No, he's just, he's stuck though. Yeah, and hello, Z Freak. You're just gonna buy yourself some time. He might be able to know, can't buy enough time for the Glimmer Cape cooldown. He does actually get it. Can they get a kill tone around here? Z Freak drops a sentry though, and here is Chessy. He's back alive, but so is Ritsu. A Blast hits him again, but now he has BKB, but that doesn't stop Primal Roar, and it looks like Chessy's going down again. He does have buyback. This is really scary, and these team fights being super long, I think favoring the Aghanim Scepter AA Blast. Vlad's, I think, is probably gonna fall. Arctic Bone coming out, but instead on uh, Cloud Nine, they're saying, "Hey, let's just push down middle. Screw getting a kill onto the Wyvern. He's gonna Glimmer Cape up, and yeah, he should be fine. Uh, this game is gonna be really difficult for complexity now, especially when you're going four v five at it. I mean, I know, I guess you can say they have someone to micro, but. It's, it's not easy, especially in a tense situation like this, to micro a fifth hero, for sure. Yeah, so... <sighs> not feeling easy. They do also have decent high ground defense with the sleight of fist, but one wrong term, one nice AA blast, and it is not gonna work out for them, so... This Roshan's up, oh no. If C9 scout this Roshan, that was a really early spawn, I think. If they get this, it's gonna be really bad for complexity. Yeah, probably just GG. And uh, looking like they're in a nice position. Beast Monster has 5k. Wonder what he'll pick up next. This net worth, this is the pause time, but this net worth chart trending super, super down. And uh, we've also got... Oh, actually, oh, Ember just bought something out. He bought a... Uh... Was it a rapier? Please don't tell me it was a rapier. No, it was, it was Lincoln's. Okay, yeah, it's a Lincoln's. It's Lincoln's. So I don't quite think it's rapier gaming yet, and I actually think that the, you're more likely to lose it here. So it's not the bestest. Okay, this beast monster <laughs> though, he is super fat. Just do you buy up a full AC? Um, I might even like this. This is gonna sound weird, but I would go with, like a refresher, just to get two two wars off in one fight. Yeah. No, and you it can sounds pop great. Necrobooks twice, like you can pop necrobooks, 
send him, try to stop the push, and then uh, refresh, pop Can you have again. four boars? Uh, like with the yes. timing? Yeah. Okay. Can, I mean, that, that's not what three. you're. Yeah, that's not what you're using it for. But like, yeah, three boars, guys. And you also can spam axes, but I don't think that matters. Yeah, it's, it's for, for the, the primary bro. Yeah. And, okay, I think this is complexity is going for the. Okay, we either win here or we're gonna lose. Yeah, and push. I think they. It is the state of the game. Let's see whether they can do it. Ember Spirit strangely doesn't actually have the Lincolns on him, but despite oh he needed a tiny bit more gold, he didn't actually have it. I thought okay, he bought he out for it. it, but yeah, it's coming on the way. Tusk is now DC'd. They don't have any more pause time though. So uh, if Cloud9 desires, they may uh unpause. Let's see if Cloud9 is okay no, he's back right away. What? <laughs> yeah, so. But Amber's gonna have it for this push. He's sending the courier to secret shop and he's pushed out this lane. Um man, this is I think complexity backed off. They don't wanna they don't wanna go for the YOLO push, so they're just gonna try to play for late game now, I think. We've got a pipe up on Swindles as well, but it feels like it might be too little too late. Certainly this does help against a lot of what C9 is dishing out. If only they had that a few team fights earlier. Oh they did. I remember they had it for their push where they all died. And it died. still went wrong? Oh. Yeah, well, pretty much they pop it, Winter Wyvern, like, uh, uses his W, and they get fissured once, and then it's gone. Yeah. So, so it doesn't, and it's, Spectre Radiance will kill it all, like, all off too. Like, it's not, it's, it's, it's got good, the aura but... resist, though, now. It's got auras. Yeah, it auras. does. Auras. <laughs> yeah, not as good. And as you said, apparently not doing nearly enough work. A now, didn't even have to sell stuff because of that team fight, great team fight they had. Has A lost? I like to see Refresher or Octarine on this guy, because I don't think you're often in the team fights, but I do see a lot of players opting for stuff like Glimmer Capes, even Lincolns for their teams, or, um, what's it called? I, Lotus Orbs. I would go Veil, actually. I think Veil would be really good here, especially when they try to push high ground. You can Veil them all, Spectre gets extra Radiance damage, you get extra Fissure and uh, Winter Wyvern damage. I think it's uh, unusual, but I would really like to see a Veil up on AA. Spectre has up the Monta as well and is getting closer and closer to the hot. They still have to be careful. Oh, in middle, we oh, have an Ice Blast and a very dead Swindle Melons. It's just going to be the Swindles, though. I would say if you have anyone getting picked off, you're probably happier that it's Swindles other than other people, um, like the Invoker, like the Ember, but still a good hero that you don't want to lose. Do they have a gem yet on C9, or are they just thinking the Necro Creeps are enough? They do have a gem onto Wyvern, so Invoker has to be very careful here. I'm sure Chessie has experience playing against teams. Oh. And the high ground vision, oh, Chessie's going in. He pops the BKB as well. Can they kill off Brax here before he gets a Primal Roar? He's going to burn down. We have Spectre haunting in, and we have action in the top area, but they've killed off Earthshaker as well. And now Vlad, even though he's burning, this team fight not looking good, but have they caught out Ember Spirit? No, Ember Spirit kills off AA. What just happened there? Looks like the BKB jump coming out from Chessie doing mad work. Yeah, Chessie was able to actually kill off the Beastmaster before he got his bow off. Yeah, that, he was, was really close. Important. He was Glimmer yeah. Caped and Searing Chains, and he just burned down to that and the Meteor Bits of Dot he took. This is this changes the game if they can well, if it, they can get a Rax here. It buys them time, and as you said, if they can get a Rax, but I think unfortunately they're just gonna force three BKBs and then no. probably be forced to back out. Does Beastmaster have buyback? Yeah, yeah. You can't you okay. see there's the little gold lining. Oh, I, I, I don't I don't cast that much. You got, All you my Cocos is always are like, does he have buyback? And I'm like, guys, gold lining, come on, come on. <laughs> so you can see it it's, on your teammates too. They're gonna get Roshan with this, so this is certainly buying complexity a lot more time in the game. Oh, I think Complexity are going to fight this. Or not Complexity, C9. Well, yeah, Complexity might have to fight it if C9 fights it, so... Uh, 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 AA Blast needs to head over there. Maybe they can... Yeah, they don't go for it. It's going to be finally coming out. Chessie, he's not going to see this arriving, but he's just going to pop Necro on uh, Forge Spirits and let him at it, so... Also, giving himself some more alacrity, and because he has that Agonims... Oh, who is... He is Cheese Carrier, Ember Spirit has the Aegis. Their yeah, time you, in the game just got extended for complexity. Yeah, you, you gotta be careful though, especially with, uh, if you get AA blasted, your Cheese will do literally nothing. So you gotta be really careful when you're using Oh, them. I, okay, yeah. Yes. I wasn't sure, I thought it went through, but I don't know. I'm I, gonna I defer to your knowledge. Does. We'll find out next time on Dota 2 costing. Someone, someone in chat will correct me. If oh, I'm 100%. Wrong. I, unfortunately, I can't read chat when I'm costing. <laughs> <laughs>
This I like this. Yeah, I, I believe you can't um, spend money on DC folks, but well, that's, they should they should add that for sure. I don't know why that's not in the game. Uh, I think because the idea is that this shouldn't be a problem at professional tournaments and lands and the such. But yeah, if complexity win here, four v five. That's gonna be that's gotta be demoralizing if, if yeah. they lose this game. At the same time, C9 is qualified for a couple of things, so you know this yeah. could just be practice games. You know, saving strats for uh, TI6 is the meme. The meme. Saving strats for eight months away. You know. Yes, if an NA team will still exist at that point, always a question. So. <laughs> they probably won't. Let's be real. I have no idea. I I'm. I ask the managers for their rosters before the games, to be honest, guys, because I'm always worried that there's been a shuffle I don't know about, but not terribly important, just little casting things I do. We do have a Blink Dagger up onto the Wyvern, has that gem as well for Vision, as we talked about. Is the full AC on Beast Monster, not the Refresher, might go it next. And Spectre, she has way more items she can get, right? She's got an Aquila, she's got Tread, she's holding a TP, she can get 8 slotted, she can have a BKB Refresher in the bank, like, this lady can carry a lot of shit. Yeah, and uh, Chessie bought out a sheep stick, so he does not have buyback. That's... He has been doing this repeatedly, buying out. I feel like at this stage in the game, it's a bit... like It's a very cocky play. <laughs> Do you think it's necessary, though, here? Needing the sheep? It, it... I don't know. I think it might be a team decision. I guess they're saying, we're going to try to push high ground, and if we lose... Like, if we don't push high ground right now, we're going to lose anyway, so just buy out your items. That might be why, why they're doing it. Yeah. And maybe if if Ember buys out, then for sure they're like, okay, well, <laughs> we either win here or we lose, and we GG. Hundred percent. So I can understand that mentality. I also find it funny Ember Spirit still rocking a drum with one charge. Got to keep that drum yeah. for the value charge. Also, still a good stat item, right? If he has yeah, nothing to replace. Yeah, he's gonna it sell it when he gets his next item. Nice blink away from Chessy. Getting pretty tense. Now this is something that is surprising me a bit. They're kind of pushing all the lanes. I'm a little bit surprised they don't focus one. I think it's because they realize that, okay, we've tried to five-man push and we've lost every single time. So let's try to just split push them slowly now. And I think they're making the right call. Like Invoker, Ember are just split pushing all around the map and they're trying to damage towers. So doing a really good job up here, as you said. They get, they're chipping away at everything, right? And they bought themselves a bit more time. How long do we have on that Aegis? Uh, they have a minute and a half. Yeah. A little, a little bit over, unless, uh, depends also, on... Also, Ember, Ember went back for Boots of Travel, so he can split push really well yeah. now. And as you said, if they siege everywhere, Spectre doesn't get to do my I'm farming a lane. But at the same time, it does mean that complexity is split up. They might be able to be, you know, have a person picked off by this lineup of Cloud9 that has really excellent single target pick off, by the way. Yeah, I think it's okay. And Ember did just buy out for no buyback. Yeah. Uh, a lot of all ins. Oh, he just remnants across the map. That's always fun to see. Nice little meatball falling. Uh, I don't know side. why he's not getting his item. Like he has, he has drums. Like just drop your drums, take the MKB. It's kind of weird, I'd say. He has that one value charge. I I also don't know. <laughs> I'm value charge. I'm really not yeah, super you sure. You gotta have that attack speed. Yeah. Or oh, Ember. No, oh, is he in trouble? But no, he's gonna get out. I. Why didn't they drop the primal roll there? Uh, they decided it wasn't worth it for the Aegis, and they're gonna wait it out. And they're going on Swindle anyway. Yeah, they're going on, on Swindle again. He's gonna pop like a balloon. At the same time, though, this means, Chessie, you have to pop your, uh, your glyph. And Chessie, he's not gonna get it with the Forge Spirits, but that tower... It is one Chessie blinking into your base away. And now Ritsu is fighting up against Zizzy, but Zizzy is losing this man fight. And, uh, I guess it's not a man fight, because Spectre's involved. But that is neither here nor there. So we've got a nice EMP. How much mana is it going to take away at the same time? Vlad going down, DC'd anyway. But now Chessie is taking the Winter's Curse to the face. I think Zizzy has to push her and Chessie's going to be dead with no buyback. Oh man. I mean, they can still defend with Ember on high ground. Ember uh, pretty much one-shot waves. Yeah. Or can one-shot waves if he gets good crits. And the Aegis is gone, by the way. Yep. So has to get good crits, has to hope he doesn't make any positioning mistakes on Zizzy. And as you said, he... He got rid of something else. For where is the MKB? Some courier. I don't know why he hasn't. It's got flying it out to him now. It has to be a little bit careful because MSS may be intercepting. They're going for him. He's buying something. He wouldn't send it to. Okay. MSS is stalking. Can MSS kill this courier with an enchant totem with a blink? It's also that weird. Is also, there... Wyvern has a refresher. Oh, yeah.
I think that's fantastic, obviously. Obviously, good idea. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, he gets the courier. What, what did he... Oh, the net worth was zero, though. It had already made its final delivery. And now they're going in. Oh, Can they catch out Ritsu here? They're taking a lot of damage on Z Freak, but if he locks down Ritsu, it's totally worth it. A blast. Doesn't matter. Z Freak was already dead, and Zizzy is just going to attack some creeps. At the same time, we have action over on Swindle Melons going down again. I think the Spectre kill, okay for these. At the same time, your base is now about to be pushed. They have AC, they have Necro Creeps. These towers are going to melt. That's... Although Necro Creeps on cooldown. That's a big misplay by Swindle. Like, you can't. He's been picked off a lot, and you can't be up, up that far. Especially because really if they had. If he had just backed off and they could have five man. Oh, they, they they're going in on back. Zizzy now too. He's gonna take a lot of damage. He's gonna manage to slide a fist it off, but holy cow, that was the Aegis gone and he almost went down. They do manage to defend this, but Zizzy didn't get the push and they forced the buyback out of Tusk. Invoker's back though, going in on one, four, three, seven, takes an A blast to the face, isn't taking the damage, but has the debuff on him and his Aegis, his BKB isn't gonna last long enough for that. And now, can Brax escape? He has Hawk Vision, his Duke should be easy, and he gets out. Rax doesn't have a TP for 27 seconds. Something to note. So he's gonna have to walk back. Yeah. So let's see if Chessie, the invisible man, can catch anybody out here. And um, doesn't look like it, but they can just, they have some stuff pushing in. They can just go to the top lane. Yeah, that's what they're pinging out. They're like, hey guys, we got creeps touching bottom, but let's just do some work on top. And he's actually alacrating, working on bottom. Fissure comes out, but it, it, does, it is off the mark. And Zizzy is working on that top tower as well. These towers I mean, going down so far. I think they're going to lose the Rex. At least the tower. They will, not yeah, it's back. a 50 damage. Like, they're losing the tower. Will they lose the Rax? Though, Zizzy hitting yeah, like a lose. truck. He's like going to five shot, uh, 10 shot this. He is stunned up. There is an enchant totem, but backup is coming for Zizzy. Oh, no. Sorry, that was the Spectre coming in. Can't tell the TP colors there. I thought it was the bots in from uh, somebody else, but no. I think this is when you buy Necro Book and you just commit to, okay, we're just going to have to slowly split push this game. Yes, we're going to have to be horrible, horrible oh, people and back. slowly split push. He is back. They have to get him into their Discord. Excitement, excitement. So. And yeah. <laughs> He's back. He's like, what's happening, guys? Yeah. We winning? And he has 4,000 gold, so he can buy something. I don't know what he's going to buy, but... Wards, all the wards. You're, you're back now. Can you please buy the wards? We have three in stock. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Just buy all the sentries. Just sentry the entire map, you know, be safe. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's actually, I think, a couple of things. That is not what I wanted to open. Um, there are a couple things he can get here. Skyrath could pick up a Lotus Orb. I think really nice against the lineup of C9. We haven't talked about it, but popping a Lotus Orb on someone. Wyvern, yeah, he might not mind taking a Winter's Curse onto himself, but it just means you have to be so much more careful about your positioning. I have seen a Lotus Orb being reflected winning people the game because the Wyvern was too close to his teammates. And then you've got Primal Roar as well. Oh yeah, for sure. I think Lotus Orb would be a fantastic pickup. I'm surprised uh, Undying or Tusk hasn't got it yet. It's going to be really good for them. Yeah, so... That's a really good point you made too. I didn't even think about that. So, I uh, yeah, I think the Lincoln's also good, but I think Lotus Orb just a bit scarier in a couple of cases. But I mean, either. Um, I think there's better uptime slightly on the Lotus Orb. I believe it's got like two thirds uptime. Time to learn things about Dota together. Oh, let me let me check. I oh, I'll I let make you check. Excellent. Oh, and then I don't even have to. <laughs> Deferring to you as the knowledge in this co cost. Either way, we got buybacks a plenty. We're rocking out on people. Tusk has used his, but. Everybody else has this. Lotus Orb so. lasts for 6 seconds, and its uh, cooldown is 15 seconds. Yeah. So it has, yeah, one third up time, mostly. So. And then Lincoln Sphere is how... Well, Lincoln Sphere is... Well, Lincoln Sphere is always up, yeah. theoretically. And you can actually just keep popping it on people. As they said, I don't know if you've ever heard, but... um. Some people have been asked before, some of the professional players, because you see a lot of them pop it manually. We have a Spectre Horn. It's for bottom. They managed to pick up Invoker. He does have buyback, but that is a long time dead. At the same time, Zizzy is like, hey guys, I hear you have a Rax that doesn't regen. And he's going to be going in in the Lincoln's Prox, and he gets away, getting a bit more damage on that ranged Rax. Ember has eight, he has 9,000 gold. Yeah, yeah. Drums. You gotta... He needs, uh, he needs to buy something. You know, he's saving. He used the final charge, but now looks like Tusk taking a lot of damage. Z-Freak, he's in the danger zone. Can they stop him? The, I think they have the auto attacks. The Enchant Totem will do it. So, um, a couple kills falling the way of C9 as I well. I think he's buying Rapier. Is he? Is? Um, yeah. He'd need two, just in case he dies. And, uh, speaking of just in case he dies, if he doesn't know that there is a second... There's a refresher on this Wyvern! Oh gosh, Zizzy, you're going oh, in no, ham and you it. need to get out. 
Yeah, he'll see the refresher. Do you um, think he has time to click around like that when he's been no, doing a lot of the split pushing? No, but Wyvern's had it long enough that okay. um, he'll check. And he went for Scotty, actually. I actually really like Scotty on Ember Spirit. I feel like a lot of people undervalue it. It is a huge AoE uh, debuff, and he cancels his bots. And it's something where Spectre, she's hard to kite, of course, because of the whole I just make illusions and kill you. But if you can fight her one-on-one, -on -one, kiting her with the Scotty and the Slight of Fist, same with the Beast Monster, right? You can get some utility there. Yeah, I I'm worried that I think he needs more damage with Scotty You want the raid You want the uh, Divine. Yeah, well, okay, as... As someone who plays Ember a lot, you don't really want to have two defensive items. Normally when I build Ember, I go either Scotty or Lincolns. If it, they have a lot of single target, I go Lincolns, and if I just need to tank up and get mana, I go for Scotty. Because um, if you don't go for at least like three damage items, normally late game you won't have enough damage, and you just kind of use Slight of Fist a couple of times and don't kill anybody, and then you just kind of have to go back to base. It's, it's not game winning, it's kind of just... I can split push sorta, I can kinda kill people, but um, by going two defensive items like that, Scotty and Lincolns, it, it really limits his damage. Um, if he goes Rapier, he doubles his damage. And right now, they're at the point in the game where they can't play safe. They yeah. need to be the ones that are trying to say, okay, I'm gonna go Rapier, I'm gonna go for these really kinda weird plays so that we can win this game. Because otherwise, Spectre is gonna get six slot, he's gonna have a refresher in this game. Eight slotted. Becomes, yeah. Yeah, he's... It becomes almost impossible to win the game. I need a quick pack checked on you. I believe that when Lincolns and Lotus Orb are both on a target, how does that proc? Oh, they're catching. Can they catch Ember here? They do have the Primal Roar. They don't manage to catch him. So. I'm not sure. I think they both proc. I know if like, you I put think... two Lincolns on someone, like when you apply the debuff to someone, they actually both proc on one spell. Like you don't proc one than the other. But I don't know about the Lotus Orb Lincolns interaction. And Zizi is in a really scary oh. position. Yeah, this is not good. He's gonna get caught Welcome out. Welcome to the danger zone. Oh no, sissy, please. Welcome back, right now, just back. Oh, oh, he does. But did he leave a remnant down here? No, he didn't. No, oh, he so didn't. all uh, of this work they did being sneaky for nothing. That was, he, that was not map awareness. That was, my remnant's about to expire. I gotta yeah. go back. That so was... He wants this ranged Rax, they know it'll give them more time in this game, taking some Arctic Bone. Will there be a haunt out from Ritsu? Misses the Slide of Fist Searing Chains combo. And one thing to note is that Arctic Burn does so much damage since it's a uh, percentage base. So, like, it's still really strong late game, and you saw it there. Like, he hit Ember like three times and took like 600 HP off of Ember Spirit. Yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic spell. It scales well. And Wyvern, just in general, like a Doxy because you're toning your opponent's strength against them. You scale fantastically. So. Oh, this is, this is going to be a hard game for complexity, I think. We're in for the long haul. I really wish I'd had another piece of pizza because the one I had <laughs> isn't doing it for me. I'm getting peckish. We all know what happens there. I mistake things for cats. Um, so looking around, we will have some new item pickups. There is the refresher out on the beast monster that you talked about so long ago. Spectre has her heart, has the Aegis, although that should be expiring in two minutes. And uh, AA, Atos. So I, I don't mind this. It's an excellent item. Gives you lots of cheap int. It also is fantastic for kiting people. I really would have preferred a refresher or something. One thing to note about Atos is, yeah, you don't think it's good versus Ember Spirit, but oh, if you have Eminence in, you, yeah, you can Atos, and what's actually strong about it is that um, Ember Spirit's ultimate is based on his current move speed. So if you Atos and he tries to Remnant out, his Remnant will not move at all. Yep. It'll go really slow. Yep. And you can actually effectively uh, lock down an Ember Spirit if he doesn't have a pre-Remnant setup. Yeah, 100%. So we're going to see the high ground push, the first of them from Cloud9. Ember Spirit not getting lucky crits on that slide of fist. He needs the crits of dreams. They're going to miss the Mystic Flare and the Tornado coming out. He does get a Searing Chains onto Brax, but needs more damage. And this boar, yeah. both boars died. That's so sad. That's boar cruelty. Oh. Some interesting four stop action. Ritz is just going to stand up here and take it. He doesn't have to worry. How long have we got on this? We've got a few, like a minute more. And so Ritsu maybe wanting to play a little bit more carefully, but he should know he's just fine. I really hope uh, as he sells his Scotty and gets a rapier. I think he needs it at this point. Yeah. He's not even one shot in waves yet because he doesn't have his fourth damage item. It's good. Yeah. Oh man. Not hitting enough, not getting those lucky crits, and Ritsu ready to fight him 1v1 me. 
in the Roche pit. There's going to be a Meteor, but it doesn't hit anyone. And now Ritsu, he doesn't have any mana, but this guy, he just doesn't care. There comes the Primal Roar onto Zizzy. I have an Ice Blast to follow it up. They try to heal him up, but you can't do that anymore. And Zizzy in the Snowball. Let's see if he goes down. He's going to Remnant away, but they use the Winter's Curse on Z Freak now as well. Ritsu pounding into him. Still has the Aegis. They managed to kill off Z Freak. He buys back immediately. Aegis is down, but he has a second life coming up, and this Spectre is not easy to kill. Brax stuck in the bunch of a creeps, and immediately Swindle Melon blows up to Ritsu. This team fight a big mess. They're losing their range racks to all of these minions. And it's down. They've broken the base for C9, the first ones to acquire a Rax. And a big team fight going their way as well. Oh, but there's still more. Invoker They're wants going. to go in. Ember Spirit wants to go in. Slide of Fist, big crits on. And do they have the refresher? Oh, she doesn't get off the second Winter's Curse. She does have buyback, though, so she could get back into this fight. But if they catch up, Ritsu, MSS taking a lot of damage. A Blast does hit, but Ritsu doesn't want to fight here. Neither does MSS. He's Glimmer caped up. Will he blind enchant totem? He is dead, so you can't do that. And Ritsu with the Sunstrike, pure damage. It's enough. Gem explodes outside of him. But both teams have lost their hard carries. They are 3v2, and buybacks galore up all over everybody's face. So. I think I think what complex they need to do is they need to buy back the ember, get a rapier, and YOLO mid. And you just want a rapier back. in this game. It's, I I don't know whether it's okay. actually a good decision. Okay. I'm sure I'm sure the only way they win this game is with a rapier. I think because. Like, Ember doesn't do enough damage. Like, you saw that fight. He, he got a lot of slender fists. Oh left. my goodness, and he kills off the AA. He piggies him. He has the deafening blast from all sides, and now they just need to work on it. A buys back. He, of course, does have a... A, a blast and forcing that buyback still totally worth it. If they can force another one, go. Will Chessie kill again? <laughs> he gets another kill. That's he needs be. backup. Like he really needs backup to We're, get some more slay on. It uh, feels like Ember. Ember needs to buy back. Like no, I think he's scared. Buyback. They know that there are buybacks. They know everybody's rich. We're 58 minutes in. Nobody's too worried about the, the golden. Oh gosh, she comes the primal roar. Chessie a blast to the face as well. Four stops oh. out of it at the last second. Well played. And now Vlad that he's back in the game. I think he'll fall, but you'll take it. You'll give your life for Chessie's any day of the week. And maybe they can save him. No, he's very dead. Goodbye. But he explodes like chickens do. Oh, and, man. Yeah. They're so rich. Invoker has 7k gold. Ember has 8k gold. This game is intense. This game is actually... I mean, like, the thing is, though, it's still, like, completely in C9's control. They don't have a yeah, risk yeah. of losing, and Chessie just bought out no buyback. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's close to buyback. He needs to kill a couple okay. things. He needs to be a motor. What did he buy? Is it a he refresher? He bought a refresher. Yeah. Good times, eh? Lotus Orb's sheep. finally going to be coming up on someone. Yeah, it's for double sheep. It's for more spells. It's it's fantastic item on the hero, and it makes a lot of sense. Double BKB. Um, dealing with that AA Blast and other things coming out, but... Can we talk about how clutch that four staff was on Skyrim? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Invoker? It was beautiful, <laughs> and then Invoker is, like, panicking and spamming, uh, yeah, there, there were, there was a lot going on there. I liked it, and so... I guess I'll say why I thought Ember needed to buy back. Um, the way the game's going, if you just push with three, you can't get a Rax. You kind of just, uh, go up and you kind of just try to harass out their heroes, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna buy back. You're not making anything risky. That was a safe play. He, he made the safe play to kind of sit back and just try to wait it out, go even later game. And same with the Scotty, he went for the safe item. And right now for Complexity, I think they, they're in a really bad spot. And for them, I think they need to be the ones that are making the risky plays. Yeah. Because, like, um, Mitsu, he just bought an Abyssal, he still doesn't have Refresher, right? Mm -hmm. And once he gets even, oh wait, actually Mitsu doesn't have buyback. Oh, I hear you've got a cat. She's, yeah, she knows it's National Cat dog. Day. It happens. I know. She's just telling us all that uh, Walrus Man is a t is a cat. Yeah. Anyway, not important. Um, on yes, I agree. There have been some buyouts recently, which are a little bit worrisome. Ritsu is pretty far away. I think he just thinks he can farm this up, but he was uh, Chessy was stalking, and also Chessy, he's keeping the full stuff in the stash. I assume that's just like a maybe his refreshes on cooldown and he'll take it back? I don't know. It's yeah, like you need you second refresher. courier. It's, it's when you use refresher, you just swap items if you can. Yeah, uh, but as you said, I do agree. It feels like complexity they're behind now. You are getting slowly suffocated by C9, and if you don't go for a crazy... Like, the safe play just gets you to lose more slowly. Yeah, I mean, the net worth graph is still even, right? But just the fact that C9 has really good late-game heroes and Undying is, like, actually useless late-game. <laughs> Skyrath doesn't scale very well. Tusk doesn't scale very well, so you only really have two heroes that scale well compared to A, Earthshaker, Spectre, Beastmaster, and Winter, who all scale fantastically to late game. Yeah. So, not 
looking rough. And now Brax is just chopping down trees. He's not being environmentally friendly, considering that he's a beast monster. Um, <laughs> I think it's though it's looking for those secondary couriers if there are any. Oh, looking for is. wards. And there is rapier number one. Will we see rapier number two? I do hope so. No, you don't. You don't go with rapier number two. Well, why one. not? Whoa, whoa! So one rapier is like the best idea ever, but two okay. is crazy talk. Okay. Yes, because you need MKB, you need crit, because crit actually gives you more damage than a second rapier. Yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't in... If you're just... The crit procs will give you more damage than a second yes, rapier. Yes, in a so. cleave, yeah. Yeah. You need the cleave, you need the Lincolns, and you need boots. So what you if you just slot. Lotus Orb gaming from your teammates? They're not rich enough I mean, for that. Yeah. I think eventually if your teammates get rich enough, you can do some funky shit where you have them being your Lincoln's carriers, but we are not there yet. I, I, yeah, I advocate for riskiness, but not that much riskiness. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. So, yeah. I, I only advocate for one way beer. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna be, uh, Lotus holding it up on the Skywrath. We've got, we, we can see huge net worths here, but I'm not, I mean, folks, you can take a quick look at the net worths and then I'm going straight back to the buyback window. Or we, we can also take a look at how lots of people are level 25. So exciting. Um, but I want the buyback status because I think really that's what matters right now in the game. So if you lose I, the rapier, do you just GG? No, I mean, he has enough gold to buy a second rapier. <laughs> he doesn't have enough for second rapier and buyback. I think he will once he buys back because he'll buy back. Okay, so the way this works is he's oh, gonna Oh, you buy, buy back, you sell something? Yeah, he's gonna sell the Scotty. Okay. Once he buys back. But I think right now, is he's he doesn't show the rapier right now. He's actually gonna... He's gonna... If he dies, if they lose a fight with Scotty, he's gonna die, buy back, sell Scotty, take his rapier, and then go back to the fight. That's how it's gonna happen. Oh, we have a fissure. It's catching out Swindle Melons immediately. Oh. Lotus Orb, and it's the primal roll, Lotus Orb. But the AA Blast is big. SVG is stuck. He can't get off that. Where's the Winter's Ghost coming out? A big Echo Slam as well, but they have Undying for Wyvern, and I would take that trade any day of the week. But Invoker, Chessie is dead, and so is Z Freak. Now Zizzy, he's trying to get in range to do something, but he doesn't have enough damage. He has to remnant away, and it is a four for one. Not a trade they wanted. Gems littering the ground. Oof. That was, that was such a good Lotus Orb, though. Yeah. But it just wasn't enough. Like, they don't have damage. Yep. So, as you said, not working out for them. I... Oh, and he didn't... Yeah, he didn't have the rapier on him. Yeah. Maybe you can sell your boots and buy a second rapier at this point. Like, maybe that's the play. Yeah, he's gonna try to say, if you want Roshan, you're gonna have to come home. But, uh, not looking like Zizzy's very confident about this push. And I don't know if he'll get any damage on the regening melee racks. The, the lucky thing is, though, is that Spectre doesn't have slots for an Aegis anymore. So... It goes on to Beastmaster, who's not the greatest Aegis carrier, um, and the cheese is going to go on AA, and I mean, that could be useful, but AA kind of once you use your ultimate, you're not yeah. that useful anyway. 100% so. Yeah, this, this is a game of Dota we got on our hands. We actually have a decent, we actually do have more than a kill a minute, which is nice considering how long the game is. They finally kill Roshan because they left the two of them, and they put it on the, che the cheese on the courier, so. Gonna be very happy with that. We have had a 12,000, actually a bit more than that, net worth lead that is now down at zero and an experience lead that is in C9's favor. Oh man. This is just going downhill really slowly. <laughs> Indeed, yes. I think the right way to say that it is going downhill really, really slowly. By the way, uh, Ember bought a second rapier. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I like to see on my embers. Okay. He sold the Scotty, so he's gonna die, take another rapier, and come back to fight. Yeah, that that was a big misplay in my opinion to buy the Scotty in the first place. I don't know. I you don't think, think it was the right time in the game? No, it was, it was the really safe play, and they knew they were up against the Spectre. They needed to go for that risky play because if he had a rapier and got a crit in a couple of these fights, they might have been able to win. We've got Guardian Greaves up on Undying. I don't know if they're useful at this point in the game. He's got a Vlad's as well to help out Ember Spirit. I'm just doing an item roundup while we see. We've got the Rapier out. They're smoked up. Invoca is also rocking the same items with his Refresher. Tusk, Solar Crest, Shoes. He's poor. And Lotus Orb on the Skywrath, who gets to be rich because he was DC'd on call. <laughs> and AA also rocking a lot of items. Um, has been blasting top wave to make sure it stays pushed out. Earthshaker has an Octarine. I like this a lot. Oh, yeah, it's it's nice for his fissure, especially, too, because you can fissure now every, like, 11 seconds, and Cloud9 have just taken a smoke right after Cole. Can uh, you Enchant Totem... Wait, fissure... Enchant Totem, fissure... 
Will you be able to enchant totem again, depending on how you do this combo? Um, Not quite. Yeah, you, you can with Echo now. Um, yeah. With Octavine, you can do it with Echo. Like, you yeah. can you can blink. Uh, well, you have to blink, enchant totem, fissure, echo, enchant totem. Yeah, it's hard so. to blink enchant totem, though, because of the cost point. But what I'm trying yeah. to say, folks, is you get even more locked down with the Octarine. That's, that's, the, that's the long story short. And he can get, met, like, uh, lifesteal off of his ultimate if he chooses to. Yeah, I mean, probably, I maybe, I don't want to say it won't ever be game-breaking, but it's certainly an interesting interaction that we maybe weren't expecting to see today. I mean, at this, at this point, you take whatever you can get. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. I'm actually a bit surprised they don't have a Vlad's on C9. It feels like the Wyvern could be an easy Vlad's carrier. This... Uh, Wyvern... What does Wyvern even sell? You don't have to hold the gem. I mean, they need someone to hold the gem. I mean, can't you just, you went out on the map, you had a little look-see, you got all the rewards, you're good now? I mean, okay, but this is the type of game where Invoker and Ghostwalk might destroy your team if you get yeah, to Yeah, that's though. very true. And along with that, like, you don't know, maybe Ember buys a Shadow Blade at like 70 minutes because he sees you don't have detection. Yeah. 100%. And as yeah. you said, just one, if you can get one big kill, like, it's totally worth it to buy an item like a Shadow Blade and then sell it again. Everybody's rich. Yeah. I mean, they have Necro books, so I don't know if that's the play, but, like, maybe, yeah. like, Blink Dagger. An example. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. So we got 6k gold, almost 7k on Ember, 6k on Beastmaster, almost 5k on the <laughs> Earthshaker. Like, we are, we are rich kids. Ember's coming up on his, uh, third rapier now. Mm. Yeah, no, I like it. I think three rapiers make sense because, you know, you die, maybe you just like, screw it, I need to get rid of the Lincolns now too. We're gonna die anyway. Just keep dropping shit for rapiers. Go, go for like the 3,000 damage crit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, if you wipe their whole team with it, who cares? Although Spectre rocking 4k health doesn't. That's, that's who doesn't care. So, I feel like, um... Just talking about mental states again, if Complexity doesn't win this, do you think it's been long enough that they're like, look, we, we know we're in the bad place, um, if we do win this, we'd feel good, but if we lose it, we feel resigned to our fate? Yeah, at this point, they've had time to talk probably yeah. about it, like, they're not doing much else. I think this is the time where if you lose a big fight, you sit there for like two minutes, wait for them to end, and say, okay, what are we going to do next game? Uh, talk about your strategies, talk about the draft, and that's like an advantage of a game like this, is that if you're going to lose then like Cloud9 are, are gonna not be not have the time to talk about stuff like that. They're gonna be focused on trying to win the game. But if complexity are like, okay, we don't think we can win this game anymore, let's say let's go on the next game with a new mindset. Let's talk about what we're gonna do, stuff like that. Yeah, and he's getting big crits, they must have seen it now, so they know about the Ember Rapier, I'm pretty sure, and let's It's gonna see. be hard though. He has to Oh, is he gonna kill the courier? Kill the Garia! Oh, he blinks forwards, it. he gets it! I have no idea what it was on it. That was, that was the full Shiva's. Oh, it was the full Shiva's. Okay, I saw it pop up on the side, but I wasn't sure, and... Yeah, I was like, maybe other stuff, but no. Yep, full Shiva's, that's good. They deterred that. Three minutes bought time for complexity. Oh, okay. I, I don't know what they can do here. <laughs> this is, uh... It's a game of Dota 2 that's going it's on for ages. We're a little bit talked out, so um, that happens. Let's see if we can find... Oh, we have an engagement up top just as I say that they're going to try to kill off Ritsu. Can they get him? He's taking so oh. much damage. He's down. They're going to be able to force a buyback here maybe, but no, they're bottom tower. Beastmaster Brax saying, look, Ooh. Ritsu, you die. I'll make sure I save it. No, all of his groups die to that, uh, to that bloody divine. So this, that was a this huge is kill. Big. They, they, they have to do something right though. Like they, I don't know if they can force buyback. They're no, no, feeling they uncomfortable. Can't. They have to go mid. They're gonna go mid with Ember TP, and they're gonna be able yeah. to force a buyback right now. And now, as we look at the buyback status, all of them up for I, the Dia. But I'm not, not. I'm not even kidding for complexity. I think you don't back. I think you force buyback, and then you go anyway. Cause you have buyback on Ember. You have two lives on Ember. They don't have an Aegis. I mean, this is your best chance to win the game. You either play it safe and you force buyback and try to get a pick off, but. If you force buyback and try to get a pick off, Ritsu can actually just sit in his base for yeah. five minutes. Yeah, and then you don't... Exactly, he just comes out, he has time to get then up his refresher and yeah. so on. Like, he doesn't have it yet. Same situation. 
Yeah. So they're pushing. They've got Ember Spirit, I believe, has a remnant. He also has bots. Oh, he's going for the kill on Wyvern. He didn't get the crits, and SVG is just going to TP out. MSS is too far away as well. Where is his remnant? He's just, oh, he's going to just bots in on his teammates. And here it comes. Will we see the buyback? 30 seconds. They're doing good work on it. They might even just backdoor the top lane. Well, not really backdooring since they have creeps in the base, but they have got this tower down. Oh, in a few seconds. There we go. Finally, the tower falls. We've got Invoker. He's ready to work on that top racks as well with Alacrity. He hits like a truck, and are they going to get themselves the first set of racks in this game? Brax trying to see what he can do with an Echo Slam. And can you committed for Chessie, but this does open up the mid lane. What are they going to do here? Z Freak tries to save Invoker for a second, but now he's going to go down as well. There's a Mystic Flare. Brax, he's so low. They need one more Mystic Flare. You've got to pop it into him, but he blinks away. Winter's Curse as well. SVG popping another one, locking down Zizzy. He's going to lose the Rapier. The Rapier. Oh, he remnants away at the last second, and he didn't have a blast on him, but in comes Ritsu. Glimmer Cape, he doesn't know where to go. He, he uh, haunts somewhere else, and he kills off Swindle, but the Remnant Master. Oh, Zizzy's going to go down to the Axes, and that is a Divine. Ritsu pinging it out, knowing that it's there. They have buybacks on all of these folks, and they could maybe get something out of it, but they've only gotten two ranged racks out of it. Oh, man. Like, if they had just forced up, they could have got a melee max at least. They're not executing as well as they- Oh, oh my god. What? Sizzy. Did he try for- Oh no, did he- He's gonna bots back, so he's gonna be fine, but yeah, he tried to use the remnant to kill off- I mean, I feel like you know here that the refresher is down on the wyvern. Yeah, it's still a really risky play because if Beastmaster is sitting there, you just get roared and you instantly okay. die. Yeah, but- Doing well, and now buyback status is looking really, really grim for complexity, and Ritsu didn't, didn't even didn't have to use back. his. He didn't buy back yet, he just naturally oh. respawned, so. Let's take a look at the big net worths again. Um, actually, Ritsu has fallen behind Brax on that beast monster, so that's interesting. That's because he got a rapier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and at least that's like a saving grace. They can't give it to Spectre um, because of the number of slots and also Illusion Hero, so that's nice. Oh no, I'm sure this is where Winter Wyvern goes for carry. Like, you give it to him, he gets like. With like, Arctic only... Burn or. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that's the play. Yeah. Also, that's... Ember sold his MKB and he went for another Rapier. Yeah. Suddenly. I guess he's banking on that they don't have enough evasion that it warrants an MKB. Yeah, and we are. Ritsu hiding in the trees. Where is the second courier? Like, it is 73, 73 minutes in, guys. Where are my, like, <laughs> secondary couriers for everyone holding items? My refresher BKBs? Come on! I was promised some good Dota. Okay, the complexity was smoking up again. I can't, I can't help but laugh at this game. This game is, uh... Why? Why, why is it so funny? I think a smoke is fine. Especially if they can smoke back door or something, you know? It's... It's just like, uh, their smokes aren't, like, they, if I was them, I would smoke towards Roshan because right now Cloud9 are kind of just sitting in their base. They have two people sitting in their base. Uh, you, Ritsu was literally at the bottom of the map in the They're trees. all about There's, to die on oh. complexity. They're gonna catch out the Wyvern, has the invis, can they do the damage? They do! They kill off the Wyvern, here comes the Haunt, they drop the Tombstone as well. Are they just gonna walk away from this? It looks like they are. Can they get any sort of follow-up kill on Complexity? Because that would seal them the game. Wyvern does have buyback, but I don't believe has two ults for another 20 seconds. And so if you can force a team fight in that window... But no, Complexity is going to back all the way up. Complexity is going to try to force high ground. And it's, it's going to be hard. Uh, Ember doesn't have buyback. If you back here, the game's over. Yeah. So Seeming this is going to be the Zizzy show. <laughs> Forge Spirits might be the ones in the- No, they smoke up again! Chessie wants the jump! They might as one of the creeps! Oh my goodness, and Chessie, he's finally popped his vision. You know that he's there. They're doing good work. This is gonna be a full lane of racks! Is Complexity really gonna be the ones who first break- break the break- uh, break the base? That's a tongue twister. No, they're backing off. <laughs> oh my gosh, getting my hopes up and dashing them against the rocks Complexity. That's them for you. They're still smoked up. Maybe if somebody pokes their head out top, but everybody playing so cautiously. Oh, having a look at that buybacks again. I really don't know why I would look anywhere else at this point. Swindles is he needs 70 gold or so. He accidentally bought out or something. Uh, he, he should get it. He can sell the TP if he needs to. Yeah. So, not while he's but, dead, though. <laughs> Ember can get another rapier, maybe. 
Sell his boots or something. Okay, Invoca. How do we- Oh, there's gonna be a primal roar! No time to talk about that! There's gonna be ice blocks off the off, but it looks like Swindle's going down! Winter's curse as well! Onto that! And there's an abyssal as well! Swindle is dead, the Skywrath is dead, and they're catching Z-Freak out! Tornado's not gonna save his life! Zizzy's going up top! Z-Freak's trying to delay the inevitable, but it is not enough! And now Zizzy is up top, has two divine rapiers on him, is gonna he see what- third. Oh, uh, he has a third in base? Oh, yeah, it's on the courier. Oh, yeah. So I think he drops his Lincolns and takes a third. There are four Divines in this game, and Zizzy is going to be seeing if he can, uh, defend their base. Skyrath has bought back. They want to buy Zizzy the time to get the racks, but I don't know if this is the right play. Of course, Ritsu can come in any time. The crits aren't enough, and Zizzy, now he needs to get back into his base. I think the, ra the Necro Creeps are working. They're deafening Blasted, so that's a nice little thing there for them, but they have more oh, than no, enough. No. Oh, Zizzy took a gem by accident. Oh, no, I don't know what happened. Rapier. What do you mean he took the gem? Oh, gosh, why does he have a gem and not a rapier? They get the Beast Monster. He can pick up this rapier. Oh god. Skyrath, take it, become the carry, Vlad! He's not gonna do it instead, he's getting echo slammed. A Blast Haunt coming in as well. The crits are not enough coming out of Zizzy. They know the rapier's on the ground, the fish is right on top of it. They need something. Is Ritsu gonna get this? Invoker doesn't have buyback, and I think that might have just been GG, but the crits coming out! Swindle Melons is in there trying to buy time to get him another sleight of fist combo off. Zizzy, he finally has the three rapiers. That sleight of fist was really small and tiny. He can maybe defend this, but they're gonna go for no, tier fours he here. Is. And I don't know what he can do. He needs the crits of dreams. He's not he, getting them, he and now he's lost. Battle Fury. Why'd he drop Battle Fury instead of Lincoln's? Oh. I guess he's worried about the lockdown, and as you said, he needs the Battle Fury. I agree with you. I don't think he's getting enough damage. They're gonna get two full lanes of racks here, and it might have just been GG for complexity. They're not gonna get the Searing Chains. They've lost a ranged rack. Doesn't matter about that age, and now that is just the GG call. They're gonna say it. Z Freak poking his head around, trying to delay the inevitable, as you said. They... Buying time. Oh. And that is unfortunately the end to this epic game. We're going into a game three. We're going to be late for the other set, but I believe they will what wait for us. What just happened? <laughs> That's Dota 2 for us. Um, we're going to try to get us into the game really quickly. I have to remember where I put the passwords. Do you have final words on that long game? Oh my god. Rapier gaming. That's what Rapier. That was. There were four, I believe, in that game. And yeah, I think not having the Battle Fury up there really did him in. But either way, game three coming out. Can Cloud9 get their first win of this group stage, or is complexity going to be up 2 0? Let's see. After some words from the sponsors, once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I've been joined by Noble Wings. We'd love your feedback on how to get better at casting. You can leave that at either of our Twitters, and I'm also on Facebook and Twitch as that name as well. Now YouTube, too. So peace out, folks. We will be right back after some words from the Stall Ladder sponsors. Exactly.